For anybody curious, I was invited last second onto a conversation about whether the Russians have infiltrated the Republican Party. And Trash this was the result. Has donated $5. Dylan Byrne crushed it in the egg debate. Do it again? Don't know. I, I'll do it again. I was invited last second to a debate about the... Uh, oh, God damn it. There, was, there were some Republicans that were then voted for the bill. They wanted something on the table. As someone who's dealing with this currently, the stuff offered in the bill seems very token. Uh, like, for example, I'll give you one of the highlights of Poison Bill. They talk about the number of beds that are going to increase. And I think one of the facilities can be increased to 100,000. We're getting 100,000 people a month, bro. Like, that's not going to cover anything, right? This is it's just like a token lip service. That's a big one that the Republicans down here are mad about. They want to add customs agents. They want to talk about 200 Border Patrol agents. That's only, like, the active ones, right? And not the processing ones. That's nothing. That's not going to do anything. They, they want to add 55 miles of border. Wow, great. You're tearing down borders we already have up. So you get to just put border where we got. It's just like a slap in the face. The whole bill. Like, if you're actually dealing with this issue, it's a problem. The bill's bad. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tag so, someone else so, in to talk about geopolitics. So, so I'll, I'll start back, researching the border so, yeah, bill for sure. Ukraine. I just did it to you. So here's the thing stop, about the dude, Ukraine. Stop this. But hold on, hold on. So this you made a thing, claim though. about the bill, and you said the it was bill, a golden opportunity. And I said, bill, I said, no, it wasn't. There are poison pills. Because I'm relying on other professionals besides a fucking douchebag and cap on fucking YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, okay. I'm listening to like fucking lawyers and shit. But I have to you're, listen to you, you're, you're, the yes, answer I fucking Andy over you here. Are, you're, you're my are, fucking you resource. Fucking, so yeah, I gotta check what you say with a grain of fucking salt. You're a major hey media fucking narrative. Okay. 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 Hold, on. Hold on, I, got, I don't want to start reading people. doctors and lawyers and media personalities who are responsible for researching shit and then explaining it to us? Stop, everyone. Calm down, okay? I I just... I Admiral Gibbs, I hear you. I hear you. I didn't even get to finish. I, I, I'm going to let you finish, but Wait. once you're done, once you're finished, before yeah, anyone yeah. starts yelling at each other about being a paid chill or an ANCAP retard, I don't care about that. We're going to let Dylan get in and get his two cents on this. Uh, finish your point, Gibbs, and then we'll go. Yeah, so my point was, it was that, you, you, that you brought up originally was that basically it was tied to the Ukraine bill, right? And as a Republican, and I look at this, right, and I see, hey, it's tied to this funding for a war overseas, which is kind of, I think, what Fabian was alluding to, that, hey, the border is the issue I care about right now. This is a big problem. Right. Whether or not we agree on what the solution was or if this bill was enough, that's it. But I see a bill. It seems poisoned and it seems like it's just a Democratic dunking point. Right. For just someone that's living here next to it. And then I see it tied to Ukraine funding. And I'm like, hey. Well, that's some bullshit. Not only is this a poison bill, they're getting like three times the amount that we're getting here. And we have a natural, like national disaster going down here on right down here. And so like, to me, looking at that, I just, it's hard for me not to see that. And then for y'all to turn around and say, hey, it's Russian collusion. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on. Like Russian work with influence. me. That's the yeah, word. or influence. Yeah. You come on, man. That's like that's disingenuous. Narratives. Like, yeah, like if you're like you know what I'm is saying? Is it really disingenuous though? I mean, yes, look at what those are the direction we're going in. Well, number one, to expect Obviously. a bunny to receive as much funding as a war, a, a, a conventional war, the likes of which we haven't seen since World War Two. To expect a border to receive as much funding as that, what do you mean it's not our war? In World War Two we had the same thing. It's not our war. Then it come to find out it became our war. What we're trying to do right now is mitigate the odds of this becoming a war significant enough for us to send you. U.S. Marines, U.S. soldiers, sailors, airmen. We're trying to stop that from happening. Sure. But listen, the GOP current foreign policy plan would lead us toward that. I'm okay. in for a proxy war, but like, right. come on, man, money, money home. Hold first. on, we're, we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss the ball to Dylan. Let Dylan get his say in, and then we'll continue on. And and Lauren, if at any point you want to jump in, right? Like, I know you're sitting there doing your homework, but come on, let's no, go. I'm, I, I'm sitting here. I'm paying attention. I'm listening. Okay. I just wanted we'll to. See. Don't you worry. <laughs> Dylan, go ahead. You're muted, Papa. Yo, you're muted, bro. We can't. I was you. muted. Very sorry. So I came into this a little into the conversations. You have to forgive me for not knowing everything that was set up to this point. But I heard that they were, I think you guys were talking about the deal that was offered, the Senator Lankford negotiated deal, I believe, from what you guys were talking about. Um, and from somebody who's from more progressive circles, uh, you know, I came up more, I guess you could say, the left wing of the Democratic Party. Most progressives were pretty upset with the border deal compromise with Senator Lankford. There was a lot of compromises that I, that 
I felt and a lot of them also felt should have been included. If you're going to do a big compromise like this, finally finding some solution for the dreamers feels like the time to do it. If this is the time where we're going to spend five months to negotiate a deal like this. And so a lot of progressives, including progressives who made their voices vocal in the Senate and vocal in the House, made clear that they were unhappy with it and were not going to vote in favor of it and proceeded uh, to make clear to not only Senate leadership, but the public that they weren't going to vote in favor of it. And then it was crushed and it was sunk. And I look at it like this. In a year from now, next time when Republicans maybe might have a chance to have the Senate and still have the House and might be able to, you know, try to push something like H.R. 2, even if it's just a posturing bill and it's definitely not the type of thing that would actually pass. Um, if they try to do and try to get many of the things that were offered in this deal, the Democrats will not offer it again. The Democrats will have no leverage used against them, like what was being used in the Ukraine instance, which I think shouldn't have happened in the first place. I think it's kind of scary to tie crucial national security issues to things that are extremely divisive in domestic politics. I could imagine, should we support the South Koreans? I don't know, maybe if you compromise with me on the don't say gay bill. That's something that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I think like we should have standalone votes on this, which Mike Johnson said at the start of his term in a concession to Matt Gates is what he would do. He didn't like to do all these big bundle bills because he was sick of the big government, but then immediately asked for a big bundle bill as a compromise. And so it really is frustrating to me as definitely somebody who's very supportive of Ukraine aid that this has gotten in the way of something that should just have a straight up and down vote. Can I ask a question, Dylan? Sure. Because um, I know I know you're coming in late. And, and so I don't want to, like, accuse you of, like, not doing something of uh, doing something you're not trying to do right mm -hmm. I, I, like to be I clear i haven't heard i've heard literally place. just the last 10 minutes of conversation that's it and right, i was a right. last second so replacement I understand. right so i understand you're 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 just kind of elucidating this specific thing but the topic at hand is whether or not this is russian influence right whether or not whether or not the russians are are the real reason that many of the republicans are not voting for this ukraine aid and et cetera, et cetera. and so like i mean I, I Let me be clear. It, you were just adding I can, that for context. I say, can add hey, that was this was separate. Happy. This was this was just my opinion on okay. on the negotiated bill, negotiated settlement. It's just it's something that's concerning because I could imagine like we're having a negotiation about whether it's a good idea to intervene in Mexico, and then the Democrats say, well, if you want to do that, then you have to introduce Roe v. Wade on the federal level yeah. if you want to stop with the cartel. It's been a problem. It, yeah, it's been a problem forever. Like Bernie Sanders was got hit on it because he didn't want to vote for um. It was like a there was a renewal of like the national uh firearms or act or something was like tied to domestic violence against women act at the exact same time and like he voted one down for one reason and then hillary clinton was trying to browbeat him over it. and it's like dude these two things were tied together like i either had to support you know uh it was I had a very silly attack on bernie i remember I to, yeah i remember having to argue with yeah, my progressive like, colleagues over like you can't blame gun manufacturers for things that end up being it was a very it was a very strange time at the bernie camp but on the issue you're talking right, about Russian like, infiltration. you want to hit women right yeah. like yeah bernie like, was yeah, very we've we've we can talk about how bernie uh yeah. may or may not have voted on the domestic violence against women. as, as for russian infiltration I, right i like i could go down to rabbit holes of like well mike johnson took this money from this specific pro-russian oligarch but right. all of that is reading a lot into intention and also those funds were given back and in a lot of these instances you'll find like twenty thousand dollars given then they find a discrepancy then they give it back and did they find a discrepancy only did they give it back just because it was found did they give it back because they genuinely cared it's impossible for me to read into all these stories i'll put aside all the financial stuff what i will right. say is i do think that russian narratives have taken hold in some of the right-wing echo spheres loudest voices now whether these people are the loudest voices because of the people with the most power or they're the loudest voices because sometimes the dumbest people are the loudest in the room we're talking about people like marjorie taylor green who was going on cable news talking about how the ukrainians were harvesting the organs of of babies in order to try to fund the war effort or Vivek Goswami, who was running, saying that, oh, the weapons we're sending over are being sent over to the cartels, or Robert F. Kennedy and Tucker Carlson republishing fake Russian casualty data. Like, these types of things do enter into the ecosphere. They do affect how bases or people see the war, and it does affect people, whether we like it or not, who also vote on this legislation. I think we need to think that our legislators, while we'd like to think they're experts on the issues, a lot of them are getting at just as much garbage as the rest of the, us off of Twitter. Tommy Tuberville is an example right. of somebody who I've 
seen constantly kind of fuck up, learn something that he learned something wrong and just repeat it and then fix it afterwards. And he is somebody who was taking talking points straight out of the voice of Vladimir Putin after the Tucker interview, repeating it verbatim and taking it as face value as an American senator. And I thought that was pretty embarrassing. And I don't necessarily disagree with you, but what you just said could also be said of Israel, of China, of the United Kingdom. Yeah, I'm, when of Saudi I, that, Arabia. this is true. Right, like By that, the way, that level of my, like influence. If you just want me, means I can clarify that quickly power, that I'm not saying you know? that Russia is the only country that is influencing us in this way. What I will say is that the Russian intelligence apparatus does make it a part of their informational war. Now, again, they're not the only country that does this, but it is part of their information warfare apparatus in order to influence both American elections and trying to create discontent within the United States. Uh, a common story that we saw a lot during the Black Lives matter movement was that there was a pro blm rally organized by somebody who never actually showed up to the rally and then a counter protest of somebody who also didn't show up to the rally and then we find out afterwards it was just russian intelligence trying to get two people who hate each other in the same area to beat the fuck out of each other uh why the russians do this well there's a lot of speculation as to why but i can speculate a little myself i think part of it is if we're so wait, were you saying that the Russians were influencing BLM? That sounds like it'd be influencing the Dems then in that regard, huh? Although they influence yeah. not only yeah. Russian Republicans, they've influenced the far left. They tr their uh, big thing, 100%, bad. is influencing the fringes of society or areas that can cause discontent within the United States, uh, especially so, if it can just cause cause something like decision atrophy. For example, making it so there's so much you know discontent in America, we're dealing so much with our internal problems, we look only internally and we don't look outward. For example, into Ukraine. Mm. Okay. I wanted to uh, kind of maybe have a question to kind of recenter this because we've talked a lot about influence, how every country tries to influence the United States and its populace and things like that. That may be true. But I guess uh, what I would ask Rashad, since Rashad is the one that, that brought me this topic, Rashad, in what ways does Russia influence um, the GOP, uh, the, the, the MAGAites, as you call them, that is unique? <laughs> Um, or uh, especially dangerous. Uh, can you elucidate that for us, please? I think the, the most interesting and fascinating way in which they do it is through information. It allows them to almost hold the Republican Party hostage in a really unique way, where once the base is convinced of these populist, you know, uninformed, ridiculous foreign policy ideas, the the politicians who run for office then find themselves being basically held ideologically and even policy-wise hostage to a base of people who don't understand foreign policy or politics at all. So then when you're running for office, you have to basically, you know, pander to these people who don't know what they're talking about, don't know what to expect in terms of proper foreign policy, and it affects Republican foreign policy, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a very clear way. You have Vivek Ramaswamy getting up in public and saying lies like Ukraine banned Christianity. When you have a strong Christian base like conservative white America, they hear that and say, uh-oh, -uh, I don't want my money going to that. But that's not true information. But when you're a Republican politician running for office, you will be held liable to this information, and you then have to base your policy around what the base wants. You, you, you muted, muted yourself. Oh, Connor, you're muted. And then, uh, yeah. then we're okay, going to go Connor, then Lauren wants in. So. Okay, well, I've been researching fucking southern border fucking legislation for the past 10 goddamn okay, minutes. Before so. it, no, 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 no. On, Wick, is your point on this. that? Because I don't want to go on that right now. No, we're we're, gonna... I, I'm going to force you. I'm going to force our relationship. This is it. Fucking Dickhead McGee <laughs> over here fucking brought that shit up. I'm going to fucking force it. So You dickhead brought McGee. it up, bitch. Yeah, and I'm going to fucking okay, hit you with well, this before shit. You go, fucking before, that, pills again. before that, uh -huh. before that, before that, before that, we're going to let Lauren uh -huh. go then, because if Lauren has something on the point that Rashad just made, I'd like to sure. hear it. And then you can quickly derail catch up to the point forever. after my rant. Yes. No, no, I, let, him, let him rant. Let him rant. Oh, Lauren's just, I guess she's here. Okay, okay give me your poison pills again. Um, I'm listening a lot today because that... I feel like a lot of what you guys are spewing is just like propaganda that each side has debunked and negated. So it's very difficult because we're like not we're not even playing with the same facts here. Okay, I, I read like 12 facts. I want to hear Fabian's two or three facts. Mm. Okay, yeah, the two that I gave you off the top of my head was um, that if you bring in an increase in illegal immigration, then you must also bring in um, an increase in legal immigration. That if if you process illegal immigrants, that it requires an expansion of legal immigration. Um, okay. Um, I don't remember what the second one was. By the way, the bill I think probably the more powerful one was, was, I'm sorry, what? I'm listening. 
It's 609 pages, by the way, the bill. It depends okay. on which. There's another one that's 300. There's another one that's 200. Okay. There's a well, summary I, that's I, like I read 12. like 10 in the past 10 minutes. So sorry. Please give me your second poison pill. Uh, and I believe the second one, that uh, was it funding the Ukraine was tied to it or was it another one? I can't remember. No, we uh, funding the Ukraine and was. Israel was tied to it. Okay. All right. So. I'm going to take your poison pills. I'm going to tell you what you're getting. So there's two poison pills of cyanide poison inside the bowl of candy. And uh, they're, they're Skittles covered in cyanide. Oh, it was, uh, it was demanded. Uh, it was it was the uh, demand for, um, for legal the record, representation. The whole bill is poison, just for the record. Legal representation. Fantastic. I have I have counterpoints for both of these. So I am, I am loving that we're on the same page now as far as facts go. Okay. So mm -hmm. you told us the bad side. I'm going to tell you what you're allegedly getting as the good side, okay? okay? So right now, there's no shutdown process for the border. Any person who crosses in the United States of America, if they're detained by a Border Patrol agent, then they have to be processed by the legal system. Oh, wow. If more than... Hold on. Hold on. If more... That has nothing to do with my fucking point. Anyways, if 5,000 people a day report to ports of entry or are tracked as crossing the border, it can trigger an automatic shutdown that the executive branch can put in, meaning that anybody who does not report to a port of entry is auto kicked out. So you have tens of thousands of people who are auto kicked out by the new bill. Second thing, people cannot claim asylum no, unless they, hold on, I'm literally reading a summary of the fucking bill right now. Okay. No, no, no. And people, what you said about what? the bill is true. The the consequence that you claimed, which is that tens of thousands would automatically be kicked out, is something you just made up from that. There are twenty nine well, points a bullet of point entry that supports that. in Texas I have alone. Twelve other fucking right? like points. Can you shut? If they're the legally fuck allowed up? to come in, they'll just okay, go Wick. there. Wick. Maybe and just I get have, a piece well, of paper okay, and write down your point. Okay. You're on and point to respond one. Later. Yeah. So can I please we'll, have we'll an uninterrupted through. fucking two minutes to read the goddamn points and he can write them down? Thank you. Page match. Okay, so people cannot claim asylum unless they go to a fucking port of entry. If you fucking go to, if you cross the border, you can't later claim asylum. That's one of the asterisks mm -hmm. that's part of the bill. Bar to meet the asylum standard is raised, meaning that right now, 96% of fucking people don't meet asylum standards, but they still right. have to be processed. Gib, shut the fuck up. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> he's going to go on his Holy rant for two shit. minutes. Let him go, let him go. The bar to meet... Asylum standards is raised, meaning that you can kick more people out of the system more quickly. There's a preliminary screening process, whereas right now you have to be walked through the entire process, whereas right now they're doing a pre-screening for like refugee-based fear, meaning that they're going to kick more people out of the system faster. 100,000 beds, like Admiral Gibbs fucking said, you're saying it's not a fucking big deal? I think 100,000 beds is a decent logistical bite out of what's going on, at least for those 100,000 people who get to sleep in the fucking bed. Increase in work visas. This goes to what you were talking about with the mandatory illegal versus legal entry. What it says is the expectation is that we're going to have a correlative increase in family and work visas, meaning that what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that the people that actually come here are productive citizens who have ties to the community, so we're not bringing in fucking criminals. Then, uh, 20 billion more for physical security. The wall only costs 21 billion. Don't know if you remember that. I don't give a fuck if it's a wall, if it's fucking razor wire and cameras, God bless them. Then, 1,300 new border agents. The border wall is only 3,000 miles long. That's one new boot on the ground per three miles. That's a 6% increase in the entire total amount of boots on the ground. Y'all acting like this is fucking nothing is retarded. Okay, we good? Okay, go no. ahead. Dan. Give him about too to much. have a heart attack. I need to take a break. But yeah, I'm listening. I, okay. I like... Who wants to respond to that? Because I, I do have a couple of things to... Lauren, go ahead. You've been, you've been silent most of the night. I'm very quiet. <laughs> I'm going to take some time. Yeah. It's just very hard to, um, you you do recognize that Biden has been flying illegals around the country, like secretly without any legal precedent and without Well, not the, so secretly. Correct. Yeah. Well, Good, put them in blue cities. Secretly. Okay, but so even, it doesn't seem like they're actually applying any of these standards and a lot of the people that they're coming, it, it, the standards may be raised, but if they're not gonna be applying the standards and they're not applying the standards now, and what makes you think that raising the standards will change anything? And then also the cost of the wall. We already set aside under Trump. We already set aside all of the materials, all of the cost for the wall. It was the Biden administration who uh, actually spent money to store the materials instead of putting up the wall. It would have cost more to not build the wall at that point than it would to actually build the wall. And so 
now adding where did they get the money from ten times the more cost to build the wall under the, this bill is wild and then uh 1300 new border agents we're having an entire invasion right now i understand that a six percent increase would be great but we need a huge increase especially with so many people immigration fired right due to the so. what's happening I know, I know, I, I, I just like there's so many things I want to respond to that, but it's, it's all, it's all this border bill related. Everything Connor said, it, it's, I feel like, but I'm just gonna stop. I just feel like uh, Luke Skywalker in the worst Star Wars movie ever made. It's amazing. Can, Everything you just said is wrong. So can I just, I just, I, I'm not gonna, I, I literally don't, just I, read a bill wrong. summary. These are bullet points from the bill summary. I know, you and the say it's yeah, wrong. Okay. I mean, I, I know, but it's Russia debate day. Russia debate day. So I'm gonna not engage. <laughs> no, I think, I think awesome. Connor. All right, so hold on. So Connor's... I want to summarize this real quick. <laughs> stop. Brought up three stop. points. Stop. Stop. Okay. Summarize real quick. Then I want to go Dylan. Then Rashad. Then Fabian. Go ahead. Okay. They brought up three points that were negative. I brought up twelve that were positive. They said uh, it's cringe, anyways. That was oh, a t sum total of the fucking argument. All right, I mean, fine. If you that's want me to really break it down, that's not. All right, so every, all right, let's first talk let's about it. Let's do it next week. Next uh, week. Yeah. Pause, 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 pause. Next week. We don't need to break down. We don't need to break it down. We don't need a tip for that. It's very simple. It's very simple. Connor, yeah. you came in and you said Republicans missed this golden opportunity. We said, hey, there are some poison pills here that for, pills. For, 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 for conservatives where they would go, no, this isn't good enough. Then what you did is you spurged out, got pissy about it, went on several fucking, oh, I'm doing all this, blah, blah, and then you gave us a list of a few things that you believe are positive, but that doesn't outweigh a fucking poison pill. It doesn't matter how many good things you put forward. If it's tied to forcing Republicans that are anti-war to not support, war, to support wars, and it also has things in it that some conservatives legitimately believe would make the problem worse. It doesn't matter if there's 6% increased funding here or some beds here or some increase to services here, especially if you're a fucking small government okay. conservative and you don't want increases in taxes. It's retarded that you think this is a dunk. Okay. Like, it's just you yeah. fucking okay. trying okay. to okay. come back from a code. Is you Who, thinking that you're smarter oh my than, God. like, a host no one of fucking lawyers, pundits, fucking people who analyze this shit all the fucking time. You're smarter than everybody. Everybody. Let's give it, let's, it let's, out. Let's nobody fucking else. Dylan for a moment, he had something to say. Go ahead. So I, I just want to throw out there that this bill was negotiated originally because everybody in the pro-Ukraine camp, was, which was the majority of senators, the majority of people in the Congress, but because of the small majority that Mike Johnson held after the hellscape that was the Republican leadership race, he needed to get concessions on other issues in order for him to please certain members of his base, which at the time were at the fringe. I, maybe they're still at the fringe, maybe they're coming more embedded, who knows, about making these concessions tied to Ukraine. That's the only way they can get it through. Now, that shouldn't have been done in the first place, but if that is done and they're saying, this is what we need to do, Mike Johnson says, I support Ukraine, we won't abandon them, but you have to give us concessions on this. We enter into negotiations for five months, but if those are the conditions under which you are making the Democrats and the Republicans negotiate, and you're doing it under that type of time span in five months, of course they're not going to come out with a deal that pleases everybody. They're never going to come out with a deal that pleases everybody, period. But especially under these types of conditions where you're making them come together to negotiate, but you're not going to get anything if you don't take the deal. You're not going to get anything through the election. Trump is doesn't want anything to be done until the election. And so you can thumbs up all of those undocumented immigrants coming across the border and doing nothing in the meantime. And then if Democrats I mean, win in November, you know what's going to happen? Yeah, you know you what's going to happen if Democrats win in November? Nothing. We, let me finish. If Democrats, let me finish. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm hearing bill. some. Yes. I'm hearing some chip, 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 chip. And it's getting in my ear. I, if the Democrats, if the Democrats win in November, line? the Democrats will design immigration policy with no Republicans at the table. They'll have no incentive to have Republicans at the table because Republicans, when they did even hold the House, not the Senate, not the presidency, didn't want to make a deal, even when they forced the deal by tying it to a national security issue, which they shouldn't have done in the first place. Fine, it sunk, but then just let the Ukraine aid have a vote if you were going to do this before. bullshit in the first place. This is this is all bullshit. Listen, this has nothing You're all to do bullshit. with Russia. Russian influence the idea the idea the idea that politicians playing fucking the same games they've been playing for a hundred years or at the very least since senators were elected i'll say right um, the idea that they've been that they've been that they have been 
playing these same games that they've been playing, this good government, pork barrel, compromise across the aisle, it has nothing to do with Russian influence, number one. And number two, it's founded upon so much bullshit. And you know it's bullshit because the Biden administration said, we need this bill in order to do anything about the southern border. And now all of a sudden that the bill is not going through, the Biden administration is like, oh, I guess I can make some promises for some executive action. So it turns out they didn't need the fucking bill anyways. Yes, Republicans are liars. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's not true. true. That's not true at all. That's Did that two parties like, wait, try to negotiate. Yeah, hold on, wait, wait, like, three three to me. I thought it was my turn. You fucking retard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we got three people trying to talk. Whoa. Rashad hasn't been in a minute. We're gonna pass the ball to Rashad, and then we're gonna let uh, okay. the rest of you go. Go ahead. I mean, the reality is that the base is being influenced by the pundits, by the media, and that is going to affect Republican policy. And Republican policy, as it stands right now, is greatly benefiting our enemy, Russia. And to argue that what's going on in you know Washington right now is just politics as usual, uh, the data currently shows that we have passed about 27 bills in 2023, the least since the Great Depression. And if I recall correctly, the main faction derailing proper legislation in our country is the MAGA faction, the same faction currently peddling pro-Russia nonsense, entertaining characters like Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens, who have been peddling pro-Russia nonsense that influences our foreign policy, which weakens our ability to stand by our allies, to maintain a strong global posture, at the beginning of this debate, we spoke about Joe Biden's weak foreign policy, his weak posture. This is the same faction of the Republican Party that wants to show Russia and its buddies, Iran and China, hey, if you invade a country, we actually won't fund them. And if we do fund them, we'll fund them for a really small period of time. So just calculate your expenses and really just strategize around how long we'll support them because our base mm -hmm. no longer wants to support foreign endless wars and we don't want to be caught up in conflict right now the current MAGA base that you're you're copying so many pleas for are derailing american strength on a global level and you can ship this as much to biden as you want but currently the republican party is pussy bitch made okay, and that's you're, facts you're, you're, what right so your argument is your argument is this is this is a bad government governments and that this is in this in the MAGA crowd is bad because we have passed less bills I cannot imagine a more authoritarian stance oh a human have than to know that the evidence that the government isn't good is that it hasn't increased laws and legislation and it hasn't <laughs> that it hasn't come together. Like when you have less bills, that means that you have more consensus. Yes. Is there potential political polarization? Yes, obviously. Is there going to be some infighting? Yes. Do, 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 do politics change in terms of what people care about and are the political parties having some shifts? Yes. But the fact of the matter is, is that nowhere in that long-winded statement did you ever come close to Long getting way. anything close to the fucking topic, which is, where the Russia influence is. You just, I just say, told your dumb ass. Happens. No, you fucking retard. Saying that X helps. If anybody's retarded in this room, it's you. If anybody is retarded in this room, it's you. If anyone is a blessing in intelligence, it's you. Basic logic. So you believe that it's beneficial for the American people for less laws to be passed, for less people to be taken care of. For hey, you Kathy actually Newman. believe that's functioning Kathy government. Newman. Kathy Newman. Newman. That's Newman. That's not what I said. Marjorie Taylor Green. That's what you are. That's what you are here today. No. You think a functioning okay. government I, is locked under? You, you don't understand. understand. You understand. You understand. I can say Iliad Omar, listen, AOC. Listen. Like, I mean, when, I it's, very simple. Right it's very simple. It's right. very simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. Your argument is these actions, these or rather inactions by the Republican Party, stopping actions helps Russia. Therefore, this is irrefutable proof that Russia is in control and or influences the Republicans. There is a massive fucking leap there. Do you deny the influence? Circumstantial. Yes or no? Do you deny I, the influence? I, I said in the very beginning that what you I mean by influence, influence. That, that you could say by Russia is no different than what you could say about Saudi Arabia, Israel, China, UK, France, oh, Australia. It? And in fact, you, it's much more evidence that countries such as Israel or countries such as the UK have far more influence on our politics. And you think their those. influence is having a much more negative effect than Russia's? I think Russia's influence is having a much more negative effect. Look at our foreign policy. Hey, Russia ain't doing shit. Bro. You don't, you're you're, you're, you're saying, what, what is their mean? influence, dude? Well, you, Russia isn't doing influence shit. What? He started the largest Twitter war in bots? Europe since World War II. I can't, I can't hear, I didn't hear a single word he said, I, okay, not a word. So, so what I would like to point out, because I think it needs to be remarked before we moved on, is that what 
what Fabian described before calling us all retarded in the fucking room was two parties negotiating, having to bite down on bullets that they didn't want to bite down on that ideological purists wouldn't enjoy. Yeah, welcome to a fucking democratic republic, you fucking asshole. We don't pass ideological fucking bills. We pass bills based off of, we pass bills based off of compromise and based off of what makes neither side happy, but actually achieves mutually shared goals. Also, I would like to back up my fucking yeah, I know brother from is. another mother over here, Mr. Crenshaw. It has nothing that, to do with my Hold argument. on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it fucking did because you literally described liberal fucking democracy and republicanism and then you called it cringe and retarded. We're all retarded. You're the fucking brain genius over here. Then what Mr. Crenshaw said that I absolutely fucking agree okay. with is that Making when you're in a functioning, I'm about to, when you're in a functioning republic and there are crises going on, a sign of health within a republic is the intelligentsia of that republic coming together in order to pass bills that benefit everyone. But what we effectively have, Politicians what we are have not had, what we have had, what we have had, shut the fuck up, what we have had is we've had a corner, a fringe corner of the Republican fucking movement that only represents less than 20% of the fucking population effectively holding the rest of the population hostage. So yeah, I would see this as a Republic in decline due to the actions of selfish assholes. This okay. makes no, so there's several problems with your argument. So first of all, I'd love to hear them. Intelligentsia are not politicians, right? You could argue that before the 17th Amendment, that are the they Senate smarter would be the than the people who work at fucking Walmart? Smarter than the people who work at Walmart, probably. Yeah, I'll give them that. But they're not that much smarter than the average person. They're certainly not the intelligentsia. The intelligentsia would make up, um, you know. Those with PhDs that are, you know, at the top of of, of, <laughs> of this is the least important part of my argument, but please continue. Uh, yeah, so, no, no, I understand. I understand. Um, so I'll set that aside. Um, so understanding that, um, the second thing that I would say is the entire first thing that you made isn't really an argument. So I guess I'll, I'll set that aside. Yes, I'm an ANCAP. Cool. You use that as a chance to shit on me, but I'm the one doing an internal critique. No, and you're you literally described the, the critique. legislative process, and then you said that it was okay. dumb. Okay. No, I didn't. I didn't say that uh, the legislative let, process let was Fabian dumb. I do concise, agree with that. Fabian. Get to your point, Fabian, because I want to get some other people in. Concise. Right. And and so so the next thing, whilst describing how based republicanism is, right, where the concept is is that in order for things to pass, there needs to be compromise. You also said that there is a corner of the Republican Party that represents roughly a fifth of the country, and they're stopping compromise. That is by fucking design in constitutional republics. Th that's literally by design. You just described your process, which you said I was stupid for calling stupid, which I didn't, but, you know, I will now, which is fine. And then you later made the exact opposite argument, which is that how dare one section of the Republican Party hijack on behalf of 20% of the fucking population. If 20% of the population don't like something, okay, and then the other 80% can't get 50%, guess what that means? That means you don't have the will of the people under this fucking Rousseau kind of social contract theory bullshit that you support anyways. So even under an internal critique, you contradict yourself. You just spout bullshit, dude. Make no, a fucking I argument. Wrong. I mean, this I mean, doesn't make any sense. I would like to make an argument. I would like to make an argument. I would like to make an argument okay. briefly that I, I got do from, from a from a philosophical perspective. I think I could agree that you don't want to have some legislation fucking process that is, uh, you know, basically contrary to the interest of 20 percent of the fucking population. And when they drag their feet, you should probably listen to them. I think in principle, I agree with you. However, I think that this 20 percent of the fucking population is retarded and deserves oh, to be called oh, okay. actively fucking retarded. Thank God. And it's the not 20%. reason. And the reason it's obviously why fifty percent, and it's not fifty percent because forty-five percent of the Republican Party is not MAGA, and a third of the country doesn't vote, so uh, it's not fucking twenty percent of the. I don't oh, even think it's twenty percent of the fucking population. Right. More, yeah. more, more failures oh, of constitutional republics. Make me do right, math on this right. panel. I'm going to be very upset at you. Okay, I don't want if to do what? fractions and percentages right now. What I want to do is make some money. So oh. I'm going to read my super chats real quick. And then we'll get back to the actual debate at hand. Okay, cameraman 502 for five dollars. When was the last time Democrats dropped items like amnesty? Not sure we should be coddling unpatriotic nationalists since they won't do jack. 
$5 from Artemis Fowl. Passing laws just to pass laws is not a proper form of government. Israel is having a substantial negative effect on the Democratic Party. Five more dollars from Artemis Fowl. MAGA isn't a fringe of the Republican Party. Majority of the Republican Party votes for Trump in primaries more than two to one. And there we go. Okay, back to the matter. And thank you for the gift sub, Admiral Gibbs. Um, really appreciate you. Uh, okay. But, and then back to the matter at hand, gang. I want so to really set. We are getting my frustration here is we are being very pedantic, and I want to just the concept. So the concept is there is a emergency happening. Either We can either take this from the Ukraine or on the border. In both cases, it is being painted as an emergency. And in both cases, because people are dragging their feet, we are unable to act because we have, again, this— uh, one might say a broken system. I want to I want to ask the panel, right? Is this a good thing and a sign of a healthy republic? And B, right? Is this due to foreign influences? Yes or no? And that's where we're going to go. Okay, so I, I want to finish that concept while answering your question. So we have a crisis. We can't act. Is it good that some people can hold the fucking ball or whatever? Yes, the fact that people who have con like a convening interest being able to articulate their views in the Republic, I think is healthy. We shouldn't just be able to ram legislation past these people, right? That's not what a liberal democracy is about. However, while saying that, that is not mutually exclusive with publicly bullying these fucking people for having retarded perspectives. So for instance, if 20% of the population is holding the country legislatively hostage, and then they get 80% of the, what they want, but they don't get the remaining 20%, and then they still turn over the fucking board game, throw a tantrum and walk away, you can call them cryberry, crybaby, illogical, bitch ass fucking pussies who don't have an understanding of geopolitics or the fucking economy or immigration or fucking anything. And that is also a good thing within a democratic Republic is bullying your fucking retarded opposition. Yeah. Lauren, you're being bullied and called a retard. How do you respond? Well, I am autistic, so I get it a lot. Um, I feel that, um, <laughs> but I just think, yeah, I think the whole concept that, that, 20% of the nation is holding the other 80% hostage. That phraseology shows to me like an ex exceedingly, like, like a very lack of understanding of our basic foundings of this country and how we didn't want a populist country, a populist group to just dominate um, people with other ideas. 20% is a large chunk. That's one out of five people. Um, and also, I think the MAGA group is significantly larger than 20%. Maybe their constituents only make up 20% of the power, but a, a lot of people are MAGA. It's definitely not just one out of five people in this nation. Uh, furthermore, probably is. Um, yeah, call us retards all you want, but you're not going to, you're complaining that there's only been 27 bills passed uh, since 2023, and this is the lowest it's been since, what did you say? The Great Depression. Great Depression. Uh, Great Depression. Um, 100 fucking years. That, that doesn't necessarily Good. mean it, that... That's y'all. That's y'all. It is y'all. It just means that we're not... Like, the left and right aren't Ooh. cooperating very well, and that yeah, we're disagreeing yeah. a lot. It doesn't mean that one side is holding the other side hostage. But I would view that, I would view all that as an hard. ideological issue if you get 80% of a fucking decent border bill, and then you're like, three things are wrong, oh. go fuck yourself. That's it's a problem. Three things are wrong. It's not that three things are wrong, and I think that you're being purposely obtuse here. It's that... There's a poison in the pill. There's things that no, no conservative. Did you find a perfect no, bill that fits everybody's no, demands? No. These things are the Nine percent of the bill is great. If one percent is completely detrimental to everything conservatives believe in, they're not going to vote. So, for instance, you can have a bill that's going to be like uh, Donald Trump will be automatically made president, and the border will be made, and um, and all Democrats will have to have their mouths closed for an entire week, but. Abortions will be legal. And I Lauren? bet you, like, abortions for everybody. Abortions. Lauren, I bet the you two, conservatives wouldn't want that the, bill, even though you The it two seems like poison you pills, want. the two poison pills the that were cited in this debate, the two poison pills that were cited in this debate was funding for Ukraine and Israel. That is not a poison pill to anybody except for isolationists. Yes, it is. Nobody gives a it fuck about it. By the way, we to be clear, this the whole reason this debate was happening in the first place is because it was tied to this issue. This is the, the, the second reason. poison pill. 
The second poison pill was that it was going to increase legal immigration, which when I read the bill summary was increasing the fucking working legal visas for people to come here, basically increasing the quality of American immigrants. So to be clear, there could be other poison pills that I'm unaware of, but increasing the quality of immigrants and funding our allies were the two poison pills that MAGA isolationists okay. simply cannot we, swallow. Right, which I, will point, call them I love you, buddy, but we got to get more people in. We got to get we got to let more people in. I love you, buddy. Right. I know you want to fight them all and we'll get there. But we got we got we got other people waiting in the wings. Admiral Gibbs is going to go crazy if he doesn't get a say. We're going to give Admiral Gibbs a microphone and then we're going to let Dylan respond. And that's how we're going. Right. So first, I want to say as to your question, uh, I think it is not a sign of uh, in, uh, influence of uh, Russia. Right. This is I think the, the Republic is working as intended. It's purposely designed to be slow. That is what it's always been. There's a reason why it's set up that way. That's how it protects government. You want small government. You want it to move slow. You don't want rapid change quickly. Then to your argument, 20 percent of us are just retarded. We're holding up bill. We don't know what's best for it. I, I, I really want to take offense to that. And like th this is the issue. You're, you're sitting here and you're reading to me these things that you think are pro good things on the bill. Right. But you're not here. Like, I can literally go 200 feet. And if y'all challenge me to do this after I can go outside, there's a migrant camp just around the corner. Like, there's literally a migrant camp. I talk about it all the time. I have videos of it. Like, it's there, right? So, like, it, this is a problem we're dealing with. There's not enough infrastructure, right? So then when you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me as somebody living, I don't know where you are, but I know you're north. And you're sitting here, someone up north going, hey, buddy, let me come down and tell you what's going on down there. And you know what's best for you. These are the things you need. And we're going, oh, these 50 new judges are going to cut down last year's stuff. Great. That's really good. I'm happy those 50 new judges are going to help. It's an eight-year list, eight-year waiting process for some of these asylums. So that's just ludicrous that you're going to sit here and say that's enough of anything. Oh, like, I mean, I could go point by point literally for everything in the bill, and it's every single one's a poison pill. And so, like, whenever you're sitting here saying this is a good bill, that just shows to me that you do not have any real idea of what is happening down here. And I'm willing to okay. discuss this on a different panel, like, and we can go back and forth about it. But, like, no, no, for the, if it's Russian collusion, uh -huh. it's bad. It's it's not a thing. It's, it's, a, it's a left wing lie. And it's ironic because they're sitting here in collusion everybody okay. as in i need to dismantle this point because it was pointed at me number one my entire extended family well not my entire extended family a healthy chunk of my extended family is in texas cool. so no it's not like i'm unaware of what happens on the like border it. number two i live in fucking orlando i'm a wash in venezuelans and cubans oh, wow. and puerto same. ricans and same. all oh, the, the brown masses of the fucking world i see them every goddamn day so <laughs> acting like having hispanic people around you is an existential I, fucking crisis. I get it it's fucking annoying sometimes they throw trash out their cars they play their music too fucking loud i fucking oh, get I it they're that. annoying it's we not like an the existential <laughs> threat to the fucking country and the bottom okay. is great like, I mean, like, where are you going with this? I mean, like, I, I'm saying I, I'm being more racist than you while dismissing your concerns. I do not, like, I think I mean, I'm Hispanic, that so I can't be it racist is, to my own people. well, you can, you absolutely can, because you definitely look white and there's a whole like racial hierarchy within the Hispanic community as far as oh, who's more Spaniard versus who's race? indigenous. However, however, the point, the point being trouble. that you guys are bringing up how this isn't enough. I agree with you entirely. I, I think that we need to fucking borderline launch a neocon fucking Central so American stupid. war on drugs fucking Define war. Define poison pill. Entire fucking continent. I understand the concept of We're delineating way too far from the top. I'm just saying, you're, you're yeah, just so dumb. Here, here, I'll define here, it for here, you. you I'll define here. it for you. I'll define it for you. We, so you're saying that- Oh my God. 80% of the fucking bill is good. The remaining 20% is so right, bad, it ruins the 80%. That's and I, literally what a fucking poison pill is. Enough. You keep yeah. acting like you, you keep acting like me that if you do a leftist, I told it to you. right? Exactly. So and you're you acting like counter. every conservative. Listen, listen. I, I understand. Listen. And we're gonna take a minute, right? I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I I I love immigration as a topic. It's a great topic. We're not talking about immigration tonight, at least not directly. Let's get back on the topic. Thank you, MOC Gaming Bot, for the other gift sub. Um, let's toss it to Dylan and let's toss it to Rashad and hopefully they can get us back on topic. I think, well, man, there's a bunch of things I want to address. So I'll try to be quick because I don't want to take up too much time. But the first thing, um, 
as for a sign of a broken system, I think that there's a certain level of partisanship, uh, especially around elections, that is making it so it's much harder for our country to deal with issues that we have, especially if it means it might look like you have to cooperate with the other side, or it could possibly benefit the incumbent. Because if there's a positive economic indicator, does that benefit Joe Biden or does that benefit Donald Trump? And if you look at every single political uh, issue through that spectrum, then you could very quickly end up rooting against the president of the United States, rooting against the country to succeed, which you should never do because we're all in the ship together and you might not like the captain but then that ship goes down all of us go down and so when i see the bill in large part being reportedly sunk because trump didn't like it being done in an election year outside of whether you think one part is a poison pill another part is a poison pill the whole the parts that you think are the poison pill is the stuff that was supposed to be originally passed independently anyway which again like it should have but that, to me, is a sign of a broken yeah, level right. of partisanship. I can, I can make that go back to Ukraine and Russia. Yeah, but that shows a certain level of broken partisanship, especially if that po broken partisanship is being introduced into issues that concern our national security. As for foreign influence, again, I do think foreign influences, uh, foreign influence, particularly Russian influence, is affecting the conversation around the war, and how it affects the conversation around the war has also affected our legislators who are making decisions. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene, as much as we might laugh at her, was made temporary House Speaker by, uh, I was about to say Kevin McCarthy, by Mike Johnson. She was given positions of power uh, out of respect because she was with uh, one of the people who jumped on ship for him early, just like she was given positions of power under Kevin McCarthy's reign because she jumped on ship for him when he when he wanted her to jump on ship for him. And so these people who believe these things about organ harvesting babies, they have more influence and sometimes outsized influence because with ignorance usually comes a loud mouth. Um, and and that in foreign influence, quick, I quick question, Dylan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fuck. I thought you were. I thought you were finished. So, so quick question. Uh -huh. um, it seems your primary argument towards the concept of influence, which I I think we all agree that there's some level of influence that all of these powerful countries with intelligence apparatus have mm -hmm. on 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 us, is is based upon information and mis mostly information warfare. Uh, I mean, there are certain right, hacking and cyber operations, so, but that doesn't have to directly deal with the Republican Party. Right, right, for sure. Well, the GOP, well, in some well, instances with WikiLeaks hacks, possibly, but mostly with us. Yeah. Right, for, from a sociological perspective, you can make the argument of systems theory, where like the electorate affects the GOP, the GOP affects the electorate, and there's like a symbiotic relationship. So if like information warfare attacks Twitter, and a bunch of Republicans believe something, eventually the GOP yeah, like will respond. The to number the one, oh my God, TV. Like, I mean, like I, I would point. really, I, I was, I had like two other points yeah, that I've been so, waiting very patiently. Okay. You know. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You made a long point. I, so I, I'll, I'll just quick question then. Well, let's not complain um, about if, long if points, your... Fabian. Come on. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so r relax. You're, you're glad to have me. Um, glad so, to have all. So I appreciate you too. All right. So if, if information is kind of the, the main crux here of influence, would you, would you at least admit that like America receives far more information um, much of which is propagandized from, let's say, Israel or UK or countries that are aligned in the five eyes, right? Oh, Where we actually allies? share intelligence, right? Like, uh, yes, oh, our, our allies? allies who uh, also oh, like it. Constantly. Well, it depends. It depends on the type of information oh. and on the certain platforms. But in certain areas, like in lobbying, I would say Israel is much more effective in that type of influence than the Russians are, um, especially since yeah. the Russians have a lot more sanctions placed on them. But when it comes to misinformation campaigns, not saying the Israelis are completely above that, the Russians are very good at that, and they've been perfecting that for the, over the last decade. So you you do believe, and, and this isn't even like a gotcha or anything. You do believe that the Russians are far better at putting out misinformation and getting the American electorate to believe misinformation with like than than let's say Israel. I, I I have much more experience with the Russians than I do the Israelis, and it comes from personal experience of them lying about stories I have worked on, where you know I get bombed, that's fair, that's fair. and then they take that's the clips like, hey, from that, and then they post respect. it and say, "Hey, look, you're at Dylan, you're an Azov soldier doing a landing. You weren't an aid worker." And seeing them do that in real time makes me do at least have a, a certain level of yes, I do believe that they have they're really aggressive when it you comes to information warfare. There, yeah, but I want okay, to I wanted, hold on, I want to make sure. But wait, can I get to my last two? Yeah, I wanted to do my last two points. Just As for you, um, I I, for, I don't know your name. You have the I think it's Boba Fett helmet. Um, what what's yes. your name? 
Admiral Admiral Gibbs. Gibbs. Admiral Gibbs. So I do agree that our system has to be slow to a point that we all know about the decisions that we're making. They can't be to the point where we're rushing something through or not reading the fine print and then all of the country just signed up to a human centipede. I understand that. That makes sense to me. But I also think that at a certain point, especially if it's not doing for purposes of review, but it's doing it for purposes of leverage or long drawn out negotiations, that it can get to a point that could be considered decision atrophy especially if you're responding to a crisis that is worsening in real time. If, for example, there was a debate about responding to like Hurricane Katrina and all of a sudden the Democrat came out and said, well, if we're going to do this, if we're going to have to do a response to Hurricane Katrina, then you have to, you know, bring back bump stocks. So you got to do this thing. And, and, and now maybe this legislation to bring back bump stocks, I'm more pro-gun. I don't know what your position is. Maybe it's good. Maybe you're in favor of it. But should we really be waiting 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 days on these two issues that should be voted on separately? And if you're somebody who cares about the community that was hit by Katrina, it's unbelievably frustrating to see an issue that you have no control over, that you can't do anything to solve, that you can't really compromise on because you have no authority over it, get tied into this issue that's completely separate. And that's what people here in the pro-Ukraine camp feel like right now. And this decision I mean, atrophy yeah, is, is just I catastrophic. Really disanalogous. I mean, that's how I it's feel. It's completely though. disanalogous. I, no, I, I, I agree with exists. you. I, I agree. Well, I, I don't know about the first two points, but I at least agree with you on the last point, honestly. Like, I, I think that uh, I, I'm very sympathetic to your viewpoint, right? Like, you, uh, you're very, I like, I'm not a Republican that's anti war Ukraine. I'm definitely, like, uh, uh, pro, pro the war Ukraine, right? But I'm also, like, b real big issue is the border, right? So, to me, everything you say, is actually holding true in my mind because I see this issue tied up and I go and look and oh, it's tied to these Ukraine bill and nobody's taking it, nobody's doing shit for me down here. We're like, we're dying in struggles. And then when I get told, I get tur turned around and told, hey, this bill's good for you. And if you don't like it, you're retarded. And by people that have no idea what's going on, I, it's it's hurtful. And it's like, why would I want to engage and work with somebody on the Ukraine bill whenever y'all are saying this about like me, okay. about the border bill kind of thing? Well, and well, so be I could say, I, like, I, right, I, right. I don't know. Well, look, I don't know if you're retarded or not. You might not be retarded. I hope you're not, right? Um, sure. But when it when it comes to this legislation, right, for for the pro Ukraine camp, for people trying to compromise on it, this compromise had to kind of fall out of the sky, which of course is how like all compromises eventually have to start. But we had to compromise on an issue and tear, take two communities that are completely separate when it comes to geopolitics, interests, lobby groups, and bring it together in five months. And Senator Langford, on behalf of the Republicans of Oklahoma attempted to do that and came to a deal that him, Mitch McConnell, other Republicans that you might not like, but some Republicans said was good enough to push forward after five months. Apparently, it wasn't good enough for some people. Apparently, it needed to be better. Now, no one's going to get anything, and we have to live with the results. But after okay. it was done, wait, let me just finish, and then we can move on. After it was done, we're like, okay, fine. Like, can we just go back to what we were originally no. going to do, since we waited for five goddamn months as the Russians take a thief cut, take this, and they're like, no, we need border compromise in order to do everything. And right. it, that that's it's, it's decision atrophy. How can South You're Korea right. be confident in our assistance if they think out of nowhere they get invaded and that's now tied right. to the southern border or gay bills or whatever? Sure, you 100% okay, right. I, we're putting a pin in it right quick so I can make some money. $50 from Artemis Fowl. Democracy is the ability for the undereducated, the stupid, the racist, and the xenophobic to have a voice and a vote. If your argument can't convince America that MAGA is at fault for the border, then you should change your failing strategy. $5 from Testicle Johnson. As a proud American born and raised, I think we need to secure our southern border and stop the invasion coming from Mexico. USA, USA, USA. Two more dollars from Testicle Johnson for EJ and six Patriots. Five dollars from Artemis Fowl. His name Testicle Johnson. Testicle Johnson. Yeah, he's the best. Testy's awesome. Okay. okay. Can anyone Testy, is that his panel? nickname? That's great. That has faith okay. in the official narrative. Tell me who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Okay. I did. There we go. It was Ukrainians. Okay. I, I want to fucking go. I've been listening to fucking shit that's going to give me an aneurysm for 10 goddamn minutes. Okay. So I want to talk about how Russians are exploiting an organic perspective in the conservative base. All right. Isolationism is organically rooted in the conservative base because of the war on terror, which was disproportionately fought by conservatives. Okay. There is a real grievance here. And the grievance is that the United States effectively lied to its own population, spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives, and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of foreign lives in fruitless wars. That is a real thing to be scared about. That is a real thing to be angry about. 100%. Okay? Post-World War II, 
the world police position that the United States is currently in was never adequately explained or justified to the American population. As a result, a healthy chunk of our citizens are like, why the fuck are we doing anything in Yemen? I've never met a goddamn Yemeni person in my entire fucking life. Why are we blowing shit up over there? But the truth is that after World War II and Saudi with Arabia. the rise of Soviet yeah, of course. But guess what? Oil's True. expensive. Don't you like fucking Funko Pops, you fucking ANCAP fuck? Anyways, so it's this is an okay fucking grievance. It's perfectly fine. And I actually deeply sympathize with the conservative concern of why are we spending tr billions, if not trillions of dollars to secure foreign countries when we can't even secure our own? What the fuck is going on? I totally understand that vibe. And not only that, I fucking agree. I want, like, I joke about wanting a greater United States of America. That's my ideal. I think we should be a great continent. However, my real solution that's pragmatic is secure the fucking border. We're either a country or we're not. And a country is able to secure its fucking border. But anyways, Russian information warfare, this is how, how we tie it back, they're capitalizing on the isolationism and they're asking Americans to step off of the world stage. And power abhors a fucking vacuum. So when you have 20%, like I said, of the population who I think irrationally, if you don't want to call them retarded, irrationally gets 80% of what they want, but then throws a fit because they don't get the 20%, and you have propagandists who are posing up the fucking Russians, and they're cheering that on. They're like, fuck yeah, fuck Ukraine, fuck Israel. They don't get money until we secure our border. And on top of that, this bill fucking sucks. It only got 80% of what you want. The remaining 20% sucks ass. It's a poison pill. It's a piece of shit. It's a fucking secret 4D chess move by the fucking Democrats. Yeah, I'm going to call you a fucking idiot because I think you're a fucking idiot and you don't know how politics within a negotiated democracy fucking works. Did the bill get 51% like of the votes? No, or it didn't. 80% of the votes? Propagandist won. Oh, so, so you're saying the propagandists propagandize the remaining 35, 40 percent? Yeah, the 55 in favor of the 20 percent, roughly, roughly the 55 percent of American uh, Americans who identify as MAGA and their representatives propagandized the remaining 45 percent. And they said it's not worth it. Kill the bill. And they successfully killed so, the bill. But, and I think that's a stupid so fucking your, move. Your belief, hold on, your belief is that our senators and, and congressmen in general, uh -huh are susceptible to political propaganda to where a majority of the party can be swayed uh, very quickly and easily Plus, by the needs and desires a, of 20%. Just a fact check yep. here. I don't believe, hold on. I don't believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, if there was new developments I wasn't aware of, but Mike Johnson did not allow the vote because he knew if he did allow the vote, it would pass because a majority of Republicans and Democrats both supported the bill. But Shit. because- because the 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 minority didn't want it to go even go up for a vote, and he Trump didn't allow it to go up for a vote. Was that correct, or yeah. am I am I mistaken here? No, you're not mistaken. I mean, parliamentary procedures in the Senate have a lot of weird rules and and, and things. Um, and, and so when it'll get so, so they I say that, though, if I may, yeah, the they technically it'll come that. back. It, please, please, they didn't convince anybody. Both of you, both of you. The the reason I say that is because Russian influence doesn't need to convince everyone it just needs to convince a couple right the people who hold the reins um so, of, of being able to now again whether or not it was um direct money influence i don't think so i think rashad had it right when it's they convinced the voting base of these individuals and that voting base puts pressure on their politicians and that's the problem is that we have an outside foreign country being able to do this successfully in a time of crisis but that's my understanding go ahead so 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 the, I, I was like, I was interrupted based off of the Go procedure ahead. here. So Connor, my issue with this is that your presumption is that our, our system of republicanism is good and that it, and it's good that it moves slow and it's good that a portion can hijack it, but not in this instance, because I don't like the outcome of how it was done and, or because it seems more like the that's not it's, that seems what I'm getting, but it seems your actual argument, right? Not to straw man you, is that there is an eighty percent positive net outcome, and there's a twenty percent, you know, potential negative outcome, and the eighty percent is better because as a, as Republicanism as as liberal democracies are, we're supposed to compromise, and that the 
political persuasions of 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 tribal politics have made it to such a way that they're gridlocked here. I don't necessarily disagree with you. My my issue there is is twofold. One is we can talk about Russia, but like, but again, there are counterbalancing forces here as well, right? Like there's obviously a massive, massive, massive media campaign from corporations and, and government sponsored media and, 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 and the military can industrial I, complex can I nip that to support though? the war. There, there, there's a part mm-hmm. here that kind of needs to be addressed. So not all, the, there's actually two points. The first one is, yeah, like I in general believe in like republicanism and representative democracy, because even when it fails, I still think that's better than authoritarianism. But part of representative democracy is arguing your ideas passionately in a public space. So when I'm being aggressive with you or Admiral Gibbs, and I'm calling you guys retards, what I'm really trying to do, and I love you, Admiral Gibbs. I'm sorry if I made you feel personally insulted. I'm that's not, not the goal. I'm not, I'm, I'm not insulted. Okay. But the goal here is not to win you individually, maybe individually, if I can uh, get you with yeah, it's the audience. But it's, the, it's, to, it's to get people to see what I'm seeing and hopefully agree with me. And then they'll pressure their representatives in a different way, my way. Right. right. right? right. And then, I, understand, there, I understand that you're passionate about the issue. And you think it was, influence was is wrong. not built equal. Okay. Influence is not built equal. You keep mentioning Israel or the UK or Europe or whatever. These are people that we have geopolitical and money and economic and social and cultural aligned interest with that sometimes stretches back centuries versus Russia, who has historically been an adversary and is also proving to be an adversary at this time. Those influences are not the same. Quick question. I agree. Those influences are not the same. Did we or did we not have a large swath of the American public agree to go into the Iraq war due to lies from the Israeli intelligence? Probably. About weapons of mass destruction, about these, about Netanyahu coming up about a fucking, the, the nuclear bomb will be here tomorrow. We have to do this so that we can stop the Iranians. Were there not multiple bullshit exaggerations hyperbole and then outright lies by is by israel Listen, that I, got I us into your, the iraq war i bit your bullet but i don't think that you can lay i'll bite your bullet because i don't give a fuck but at the same time i don't think you can lay that shit at solely the israelis the israelis corroborated and that's saying like, hold, hold on hold on i thought it was there bad was, intelligence was, from iraqi opposition <laughs> There was, was bad a, intelligence on. from Iraqi opposition. Just the fact there, was here. there was a lot of intelligence. There was German agencies agencies intelligence. All... Yeah, there were like four yeah. or five. Yeah. So, and and by the way, there were mm-hmm. ca- there were there were competing factions within the intelligence communities themselves, where some of the Americans and some of the Germans and some of the UK people were like, "Hey, you're giving George Bush what he wants," but realistically, I think this information is bullshit. And those places were suppressed. So my my point overall being like, yeah, influence from our allies can absolutely. Or you be just negative. bite the bullet. What's your what's your broader point? My broader point is this, is that your evid- all of the evidence that, that the panel keeps trying to present of Russian influence is incredibly limited. And instead, what you're trying to do is you're trying to follow the connections. You're working backwards. The entire argumentation has been, I have an assumption that Russian influence is having a negative impact on the GOP, so I'm going to search wait, for evidence wait, of wait, these wait. things. Let's be clear. And then we we know that Russian propaganda is having factors. that effect. It's not a question of if. No, because we Wait, 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 yes. wait. Let me, let me, Hold can on, I? Yeah, let Dylan make On the number one cable news show in the United States, Tucker Carlson's TV show, when he still had it for Fox before he got removed, he said that for every Ukrainian soldier, every Russian soldier to die, seven Ukrainian soldiers die. He then had RFK the next week on to repeat the same thing on the show. There was no correction ever issued, nothing ever corrected. This was complete fantasy. These were photographed documents from the Jack Tex terror leaks. What was that? You're, you're making my point for me. Wait, wait one second. You're I can't. No, wait, me. Fabian. Fabian, can you, can you quiet down so I can hear somebody else talk for a second? What were you saying? What party is RFK in, though? What party is RFK? He is an independent, right? He's running as an independent now. But he was, well, he was a Democrat. He was a Democrat, but he's running as an independent. And? That's what I mean. Wait, wait, let me be clear, though. Do you think Fox News Tucker Carlson show is watched by Democrats, or do you think it's watched by mostly Republicans? Which side do you think it's mostly watched by? Like, if you were Marjorie Taylor Greene, are you more likely watching MSNBC or are you more likely watching Fox if you're watching either of these shows? 
It's going to watch the it's gonna, uh, I think it's most likely going to be the Fox. It's going <laughs> to be with Fox. Fox it's going to be with Fox News. It's going to be with Tucker's show. And these politicians repeat these talking points. Uh, uh, senators have. Congress people have. And it does have an impact if all it takes. Now, if this was maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, it would have had less impact. But when all it takes is one congressman to do a recall vote, these psychos all of a sudden with a two-seat majority have outsized influence when they're influenced in these ways. This is a Martin Bailey. This is a Martin Bailey. And, and I'll explain wow. to you why it's a Martin Bailey. Because what we are talking about is we are equivocating what every what the everyone's colloquial understanding of is is no, we're equivocating two arguments, right? And what what we are doing is there is one argument which is everyone here agrees to, which is that a powerful country such as Russia that has an intelligence apparatus. Thank you so much for the rate. Appreciate it. You don't deafen yourself. I, has I some rated. level of influence that has some level of influence on both political parties and in the American public. And that this is true of any country that is powerful enough to have a overarching intelligence agency. Now you may argue that Russia has slightly more or that Russia is a little bit better at it or that, and that's fine. That argument is valid. The problem here is that, yes, I accept that there's some influence, but the argument that we're trying to make that everyone is invoking when they hear this topic is the concept that is the Republican Party to a statistically significant degree being hijacked by Russian misinformation? Was that the question? Russian I mean, culture. Was that the but, question? I was about question to say, is, what was the is, 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 we're, is we're a large country control. influencing if the question is, is does it exist at all that a large country such as Russia has some level of influence, then there's no point for this fucking panel because the By obvious the way, answer is yes. That's true of China, that's true of Israel, that's true of UK, that's true of France, that's true of Australia. Dylan, but Rashad, now, I want Rashad to answer I, that question. I don't, want to get, I don't want to get too much into the to my like, intelligence operations, but talking backwards. about the Russian intelligence attempts at infiltrating of the National uh, Rifle Association, uh, the Russian intelligence infiltrating of FPI confidential sources, which we're now finding out a little bit more about about as more is coming to light about what Jim Jordan and other uh, uh, congressional Republicans were relying on as they're going through with the Hunter Biden case. It's hard to know exactly how deep either intelligence infiltration or something like that is because I don't have access to the intelligence. You don't have access to the intelligence. So all I can monitor as of right now is the Internet Research Agency, which the Russia's funded to spread misinformation in the United States. I can point towards attempted maybe infiltration of the Russian Orthodox Church with spies within the United States, but it's going to be hard for me to uh, to outside of uh, uh, assuming intention when it comes to certain Russian oligarchical donors right. with certain Republicans to be like there was some meeting where this Russian oligarch sat down with Mike Johnson and said you will stop the yeah, bill here's twenty thousand. So wait, well let me position. be let me be finished. So when it talks about yeah. infiltration, what I can talk about is how Russian propaganda has infiltrated the Republican Party, how the Russian information warfare has infiltrated the Republican Party. Because when yeah. it talks about Russian intelligence infiltration of the Republican Party, that's still to be determined, and we don't have sufficient evidence of that. Yeah, the, the, the question in the tonight's debate is Russian influence, to be clear. Um, that is vague, but I want Rashad because Rashad was a— Is um, Russia influencing the Republican Party? Is that the question? question? I did try to put a link in the chat, and it doesn't seem to be allowing me— DM me the link, and I'll put it in the chat for you. What's the link? It was something about how um, the Russian influence is not nearly as— like, although Russian influence exists, Summarize there is it for us, yeah. really no data to show that the election was lost due to that. And in fact, the Russian influence seemed to really only affect far right people who were already far right. So it didn't seem yeah. to actually. I want to comment well, on this one. Well, to be clear, I'm not talking about the election. I'm talking about the blocking of Ukraine. Right officials are. We're going to go to Rashad we're first, and we're going to go. are not talking about Fabian, the last Fabian, eight please. years of Russia, Russia, Russia. We got to let other Russia, people Russia, in. Russia. Fabian, Fabian, we got to let other people in. We're going to Rashad, then we're going to Gibbs, and then I got more Super Chats. Yeah, I mean, when Russian influence is actively derailing our foreign policy, it's ridiculous to try to equivocate it to the influence of other nations such as the UK or Israel or our allies. Um, when we have congressmen like Matt Gates saying he would prefer Russia, an American adversary, over Ukraine to be a part of NATO, when we have uh, Ted Cruz going on Twitter and reposting Russian propaganda, when we have Marjorie Taylor Greene saying the things that she said about Ukraine and babies and all this nonsense, we have Tucker Carlson going to Russia and romanticizing Russian culture and lying to the American people and saying the reason why you don't have a good grocery spending life is because our politicians are manipulating us. And in reality, Russia actually has a grocery paradise. When we have this going on, this conjunction of operation between 
both conservative media and conservative politicians, it becomes really obvious that there is an influence and it's slowly but surely building. I mean, you mentioned um, you conspiracy theory when it's literally happening in front of us. This isn't okay, this hold isn't hold 9 11 truth. So, Fabian, your argument oh, is yeah. that no, they're not I'm, bought and paid for, they're just retarded. That's your argument. They're just doing it so, for free. Well, no, no. First and foremost, when, when, when it comes to a first goes to a grocery mine, store, mine. Yeah, oh, pause, Tucker pause, 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 pause. We're gonna go through. We're oh, gonna yeah. go through point by point, real quick, real quick, real quick. Sure. Chad Cruz, probably more likely just retarded. Okay. Sure. When it comes to okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I would probably love to go far list. more likely that she's retarded. When he turns okay. to Tucker Carlson, that's without what we're a doubt, doing. he is tailoring his message and propagandizing both for Russia and for his audience because he okay. knows that the populist audience wants to see him shit on America and shit on the Biden administration and talk about a great. And that has an effect on the Russians. voting base, does it not? Right. Oh God. Right, so two and a half but again, your argument, your argument is 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 again. You, you're not addressing the issue here, which is that you're going back. You're saying it's it's crazy to equivocate between Israel lying to us directly as our presumed ally, a position of trust that you helped get that us that's into the main reason into, why we into, crashed out in, in Iraq. into the Iraq war. It is certainly Have you what, proven that that's the main your reason? argument. It is synonymous with your argument is the concept that a few politicians and a few and a small portion of the American public are, are spouting this information. I don't know how old you are. I don't Do know how old you are. I don't know how old you are, but if you were alive during the time right the lead up right before the Iraq war, fucking everybody was talking about weapons of mass destruction. It there's was a, a talking George point. Was like the, every a fucking point right here. Was George right Bush here. instead of the Israeli right government? Here. There's a huge point right here, which is- You think Marjorie Taylor using, Green is an okay, asset not just of the okay, Russian- enough, I mean, not just Fabian, enough. not just Fabian, but he, we keep using the word equivocate, which means use ambiguous language so as to conceal the truth. Whereas I think what yes. we're looking for is equivalent, which is making something equal in value. Oh, please, please, let's not do the definition. Debate. Admiral Gabs, Gibbs. I'm doing that on Admiral purpose Gibbs. because how do Admiral we know Gibbs. what we're talking about? I want to hear Admiral Gibbs right now. Admiral so, Gibbs. I, I, I got a few things I want to say. Well, I, first of all, and after you, we're going to go to the super chats, and you're not going to interrupt my money, gang. Okay, just FYI. But go ahead, Gibbs. <laughs> so yeah. So for, first thing I want to say, I, I, this this Tucker Carlson thing that I, I've heard several times tonight, I got to say is the biggest pussy bullshit like talking point I've ever heard, and I'm going to tell you why. If anyone in here wants to be a person on Twitch or anyone wants to be Thank a you. journalist or whatever, and they have a chance to interview Putin, they're going to interview Putin. Like if North Korea, if, no. if Kim Jong, That's hold on, if, hold on, hold on. If Kim Jong was going to call me up and go, Gibbs, you want to interview me? I would do it in a heartbeat. And if, I don't know if you know this, but dictators having people go to the grocery stores and then talking about how good they are uh, just in order to get the interview is literally a meme that they did in the movie called the interview. They take him to a grocery store. Like this is the thing dictators do. So I, like, I don't, I don't want to take. Wait, 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 I'm not going to learn. I'm not learning. I'm not learning journalistic ethics from Seth Rogen. Okay, I'm not learning journalistic ethics from Seth Rogen. Let me just finish here. Right? So that it's literally a meme. We He's all know it. Like, y'all are being disingenuous when you say y'all wouldn't do the interview if you would. Like Yo, I know right now, if Wick was going to get paid, started making money, he would do it. Like we all do. Next, two second. The idea that like the average person, the average Republican is sitting here thinking about. Russian collusion, and when you're talking about this 20% that didn't want this bill and other things that go on, like, is ludicrous. The average person's not sitting here thinking about Russia and Ukraine. They're thinking, why is the grocery prices going up? Why are my tax dollars going up? And then when they turn and see, oh, we're having an in a, a literal invasion, they think, this is a foreign policy issue that's right on our border. What are we doing about that? As opposed to, that's a foreign policy issue half a world well, away. And like, so, dude, when you're going to sit here and say, part of the reason why there was an increase the reason why I got groceries and fuel just, is because of the war in Ukraine, though. You're just Part of the reason why we have inflation all is because of what the Americans are doing. And you're the Russian economic hit is worse. And it's just ridiculous. And it's really disingenuous. And it's like, like and like, literally, is it though? Said, I mean, Tucker Carlson sat there and gave him a softball interview. So, you're working backwards. Tucker gave him the weakest interview. Tucker gave him the weakest interview. I'm hearing that for all time. 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 These enough, people are enough, they, uh, Gibbs. Inflation's the Russian I'm almost Don't done. I'm on my last thing. Finish your point, Gibbs, and I'm then sorry. you guys can respond, and yeah. we will go Rashad, yeah. then Dylan, then uh, 
Then I'm going to read my super chats. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, I'm okay. sorry. I'll just give you another thing. And so lastly, like Fabian said earlier, they all are y'all are working backwards, right? Y'all are going, oh, these people didn't like the border bill because we gave money to Ukraine. It must be Russian collusion. Or oh, this X Y Z happened must be Russian collusion. And y'all can't fathom the fact that there's a large enough segment of the population going, holy fuck. This is not what we want. And then whenever they say that, y'all call them retards or y'all like try to like vilify them and instead of like giving them a seat at the table. And and then people are pissed and people are pissed. And that's what happens happening. And it's not Russian influence. Okay, okay, I have a direct okay, response. Rashad, hold up, hold can up. You hold Rashad, up. Rashad responds and Dylan responds. Then I'm reading my goddamn super chats. Go ahead. Well, the most insidious part about it is Tucker made more of an attempt to demonize NATO than Putin did. He kept trying to recenter the conversation to how bad NATO was, and Putin kept trying to center it to, like, you know, 800 AD or some shit. The idea that somehow or another what that man did, Tucker, what he did, was not insidious, was not manipulative, was not pushing the Republican base toward a much more Russia-friendly, Russian-favorable, and anti-American, anti-NATO narrative, it's not true. And this is going to have negative effects on our foreign policy, especially when you have people like Candace Owens not only being anti-Ukraine, but also being anti-Israel. So now you have a double effect here. <laughs> then we also talk about... Okay, we talk about a right winger. Okay, we're gonna let, we're gonna let Big Dog, we're gonna let, we're gonna let him go. Anyways, the idea that somehow or another, this is like a, this is like a weak thing. It's not gonna have any significant effect. I mean, Tucker Carlson is probably the biggest independent journalist in the country. This man is on a roll right now. He's on a tear. And his narratives and his propaganda is going to have a significant effect at the voting booth as he continues to go further and further and further. So what go ahead. specifically as... did the like what what specifically in the Russian interview did Tucker say that you thought helped support Putin? Because at the same time, it was not, it was less like what he didn't say. It was not less what he said as what what he didn't say and how he wasn't prepared no, for the interview no. in any I mean, way. Even like, in the beginning, when, even in the come beginning. on, god yeah. damn it. You got it. Okay, Take thank you. Pause. Jesus, I've been waiting. Perfectly evasive. Whenever Ru Trump tried to give him anything, even okay. sort of kind of hard, he would just completely evade the question. And that in itself proved Putin was just trying to essentially recreate the Soviet Union and has these ideas of grandeur. If anything, it did that interview exposed Russia for what they're trying to do and made more conservatives skeptical of you know, Ru Russia, maybe even more supportive back of this up Because again, when I was uh, when I was hosting the debate between Destiny and Ian Crossland, Ian Crossland was asked directly what he thought of the Tucker interview, and he said that it convinced him that NATO wasn't the issue. Is that was that Tucker's goal or not? That's a different question. It wasn't what his goal. Dylan? Okay. How the fuck did you know? Like, is that because you the beginning of the interview? No one's touching the interview. Okay. Give me a man. You're a conspiracy theorist. Friend of mine. I know better than you. What he's actually trying to do, y'all? Okay. Whatever you were up to before you came back, go back to that. Anyways, Tucker literally not being a conspiracy theorist. Rashad, you gotta let Dylan. You gotta let Dylan go. You gotta let Dylan go. Dylan can take it. Dylan can take it. Okay. So. I, you know, I, I report on the war. Um, that's my job. And so I was very interested to see when Tucker said he was going to interview him. But I was immediately worried because I've seen Tucker interviews before and they're quite shit. Um, at least when it comes from like a critical perspective, the type of interview you have for like your friend, fine, perfectly fine if you're interviewing your next door neighbor, you want to get to know him. But if you're hosting like a critical interview, for example, of that guy who said he had gay sex with Barack Obama while smoking crack, he didn't really ask many critical questions, just kind of took everything he said at face value. It was like, oh, I guess Obama smoked crack and had gay sex when he was in his youth as a young congressman. And that was that. And I expected something similar to that in the Putin interview. But what was worse to me about the Putin interview is Putin isn't a, a gay crack addict. Putin is a bloodthirsty dictator with decades of experience and intelligence apparatuses that he's now being put in front of. And Tucker's somebody with no experience in the region. He's never interviewed a Russian political leader before, never interviewed a Ukrainian little political leader before, never done war journalism, has no experience in the region, and tons of other journalists have asked to interview Putin since the start of the war. Steve Rosenberg, fantastic journalist with the BBC, he asked to interview Putin. He gets rejected time and time again. Dozens and dozens of journalists. And
And right when Tucker said at the start, I was the only one brave enough to interview Tucker, I knew I was about to be taken on a bullshit rodeo because I know other journalists who have tried to interview the guy. And then he goes in there and he has no knowledge for 44 minutes as Putin goes off, just writing his own version of Russian history as he sat there completely out of its depth, getting confused about what the Orange Revolution was when Putin started talking about it because Tucker doesn't know anything about the Orange Revolution. And so my problem was not just that Tucker didn't push back on a lot of Putin's narratives. It's even if he wanted to, he didn't have the experience to push back against Tucker's narratives. The reason he was chosen out of all the rest of the dozens and dozens of journalists who have tried to interview Putin is because Putin knew even if he wanted to, he couldn't fight back. And even if Putin embarrassed himself, that is in spite. Uh, that's not because of, I think, Tucker was doing a great interview. That's because I think that's just who Putin is. I think Putin is actually a lot uh, less personable than people think, at, at, okay. yeah, despite Tucker's best efforts. Okay, before, before we go to counterpoints, and we will go to counterpoints, let me read these super chats, please. I gotta make money, gang. $10 from Common Cure to say, Scott, if you want to say legislative gridlock is a feature of a, or system of our system, fine. But when the reasoning for holding up legislation is based in wild conspiracy theories, that's a very unique problem. Twenty dollars. From the Democrats? From there? Is uh, it conspiracy no. theories? Democrats? No, I, clearly not. I was just curious. I was just curious if you met Republicans yeah. or Democrats. Yeah, he, he um, almost certainly. Uh, Artemis Fowl for twenty dollars. I don't understand why we put so much weight on our intelligence and military agencies when they're the ones who told us that Afghanistan was not going to fall for seven months and it fell within 10 days before the Kabul evac. <laughs> $10 from Artemis Fowl. Uh, would Russia have any influence at all if U.S. intelligence and institutions and media weren't consistently lying and spreading their own misinformation for years? $5 from Ben Doa. Putin also put an op-ed in the New York Times in 2013. Is the New York Times compromised too? And five more dollars from Artemis Fowl. I watched Zoomers and millennials agree with Osama bin Laden's open letter on TikTok, and people are concerned about Russian influence instead of China. Okay, with that, we'll go to counter. He's been waiting for a while, and then we'll just go to the open again. Go ahead. Yeah, addressing Artemis Fowl, uh, I agree that China is a way bigger player than Russia. If anything, Russia has proved itself to be a paper tiger. They haven't been able to take Ukraine, and it's basically uh, it, they Ukraine should not be a military fucking rival at all. Well, and then it sucks that Admiral Gibbs walked away because that was the next thing that I was going to address. Uh, so I'll just actually address Artemis Fowl one more time. So uh, why would we trust American intelligence agencies when uh, Afghanistan fell in seven months? What we call that is a perverse incentive. Almost everybody who was involved in the DOD in Afghanistan basically knew that the place was ready to fucking explode by the time that we pulled out. And uh, the politicians want to hear what they want to hear. Six months is not a rosy picture, right? So, uh, you know, six months is a very short time considering we dropped billions of dollars in to that so that was probably the intel guys telling the politicians what they wanted to hear which was not a rosy picture so just like saying that they're, like they're wrong and retarded is incorrect all right so admiral gibbs specifically i was frustrated 20 minutes ago and this is why uh you know not you because i love you and i love your mandalorian helmet but the reason why i call some conservatives retarded and why i think some of their perspectives are retarded is because specifically the grocery store argument okay Tucker Carlson walks into a grocery store and he goes, oh my God, they got beef, they got bacon, they got Brussels sprouts, they got potatoes, they got vodka. The Russians are doing fucking great. And it's no wonder why Americans are so fucking mad that their food prices have gone up by 300% in the past two years when Russia is a dictatorship and they have perfectly fine, widely available, cheap groceries. Do you know why that's fucking retarded? It's because Russians have also experienced fucking inflation like a motherfucker, and they also spend more of their annual budget on fucking food. So this motherfucker said some of the dumbest shit possible being charitable to one of America's rivals for no goddamn reason. So I appreciate this argument. that you, if you all heard this fucking argument, the then, then, why, then why would you cite that as a good thing? And then secondly, you no said one that- did. No one did. Okay, so, okay, secondly, you said that it was a fucking meme from a movie. I mean, did his is. audience get that? Did they get the joke? Because I didn't get the fucking joke. I mean, obviously, I watched it and I saw both. And I'm his audience and I got it. So, so when yeah. Tucker Carlson was praising Russian <laughs> grocery store <laughs> least... prices, was he memeing? Was he joking? I mean, the meme. The, this is the meme: is that the, they're going to go in there, they're going to say that, they're going to get this 
false impression and they're going to go say that on TV. That's like literally so what, what the meme so is. So what's he doing or meta that the dictator's irony. making him doing it behind is, the thing? Is he a J-Reg slash Dreg watcher where he understands post-ironic <laughs> humor and he's expecting his audience of fucking boomers to understand post-irony? No, what I think most people, no. and this is the way I took it, I mean, as uh -huh. an audience member, was that, oh, Putin probably made him do this bullshit so he could get the interview. That's like, uh, basically the that way is, I it. That is I, really bad. Yeah, I wildly like what, like, respect listen, listen. your intelligence thinking that far ahead compared to the average conservative who probably went, Oh yeah, based. Russia has cheap groceries. That's, That's fucking true. sick. Speaking I don't know why I have to tolerate all these blacks and Hispanics and gays in my fucking movies. Why don't we just purge all the fucking degenerates and get cheap grocery prices? Authoritarianism is fucking awesome. That's Speaking literally of, what I expected most sure. people to get from that. Speaking of average conservatives, I want to hear Lauren's take on this. Um, I'm gonna get uh, please. Damn, give us, he just called you retarded. The, uh, what the fuck? No, I said average okay. conservative, right? Yeah. Okay, whatever. So, um, when it comes Rude. to the groceries thing, Tucker's whole point uh, was that the that Biden's foreign policy of the embargo, which was oh, meant to harm yes. Russia, did not work. So the fact what? that you just completely how can you like, say that? I mean, wait, 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 hold on, wait. hold on, let her get her <laughs> argument out. She okay, okay, I'll let her finish. I just, I'm just, yeah. I, I disagree want, with the premise. Now can I Sorry, but what? you think the embargo helps Americans? Do you think the embargo? I think it helped our foreign policy significantly. Yes, and I mean, I, I, I assume when you say embargo, you mean sanctions. Not wait, wait, one second. I assume when you mean embargo, you mean sanctions. Yeah. Okay, so that's the yeah. first thing. The second thing is the purpose of the sanction wasn't destroy Russia. The American government doesn't want to destroy Russia. That's the last thing the American government wants to do. Uh, the reason why the American government's totally terrified of escalation and terrified of Putin regime's collapse and is why during the Wagner coup, they told the Ukrainians to chill, don't do any big operations during this, is because if, if the Russian government collapses, the entirety of the former Soviet nuclear arsenals within Russia. The entirety of it. And if it collapses into some weird warlord state, where are all those nukes going to go? What's going to happen to all these nukes? This is why we negotiated with the Ukrainians and told them to give up the nukes and give them to the Russians because we wanted to concentrate them all in one area so it would be safer. Obviously, I think in That's retrospect, cool. most Ukrainians that was the beginning regret that. But point. no, I one second. My point is, the my first, my point, my first point is, the point of the sanctions was never to destroy Russia. The point of the sanctions was to hurt the Russian economy and undermine the Russian war machine. Both things which have been achieved and will continue to be achieved. The Russian ruble has been inflated. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know if you know anything about, about the Russian economy or not. Can you tell me about the fantastic Russian economic indicators that I have missed? Go ahead, Lauren. Well, you can look at- Or you can finish the rest of your point. Just the grocery, the whole point of the, the grocery store theme. prices. I know a lot about Russian no. grocery store prices. Let's talk about it. You know a lot about yes. Okay. Russian egg prices have gone up sixty one percent by the start of twenty twenty three to the end of twenty twenty four. That's a significant increase in Russian egg prices, and it's not just eggs, and it's much of other, a ton of other like family household oh, goods that Russians on. need to consume. Give give it to Lauren. No, I'm just you just say you're bringing up these you these grocery store Dylan, prices. Dylan, huh? Dylan, stop. Dylan, stop. You gotta let Lauren respond. Okay. Lauren, I gotta give you some space. Go I ahead, chose Lauren. eggs because it's a staple. Or, okay, you, you didn't choose staple, eggs because there was a massive flu in Europe. Yeah, it wasn't. Wait, 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 wait. The sanction stuff. It wasn't just. Y'all, you think it's just the, okay? If you want to pretend that the Russian economy. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Stop! 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 Lauren hasn't even gotten her goddamn point. Okay, let her finish, and we'll talk about Russian groceries. Ten words. Let her finish the point. Inflation in America. Fabian, you you stop. Sixty-one percent increase. One year. Let Lauren get her whole point out, and then we can address it i promise you go ahead lauren okay and then also just we completely weakened the value of the u.s dollar by so many things that we did to russia at, in forms of sanctions the by saying that like certain um oligarchs can just be wiped from banks and have all of their stuff stripped and complete that completely um loses the meaning and the backing behind the U.S. dollar. And so there are countries, including Russia, who are thinking about switching to the yen. So the yen? like, how does that help Americans, what Biden did? Biden completely- By weakening the war effort of our- Yeah, enemy. I assume you meant the yuan, not the yen, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes. Like if we do it the now, one is, that the one is Chinese, the, the yen Chinese. is Japanese. Chinese, Japanese, but yeah. we yeah. can we can make fun wait, of this egg. Wait, 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 no, wait. Uh, come on. This is like my what? But the Russian economy is like okay. the one. Egg is so yeah. dumb. Considering so, we had like the bird flu, we had a bunch. Like the eggs went up. Okay. So if you don't, if you don't think number one, a six, we did not have a sixty-one percent egg price increase over the last year. We didn't have that. We had a much larger. We didn't have a much larger. Prove it. What do you mean? Prove it, because we didn't have a 61% increase. Okay, Fabian just said it was 40. Last time I checked, 40 is lower than 60. <laughs> I just, no, but, real, real bad. Yeah, no, I'm it's not so saying it's bad, bad, but okay. If you don't like the egg price increases, then how about we talk about the freezing right. of social spending? Like, or what about the 50% reduction in Russian government revenues? What about the destruction of the foreign reserves? What about like the melting down of the gold reserves? What about the right. massive electricity outages across Russia as their services are breaking down? What I mean, there's multiple issues that we could talk hey, about. They could about be the, talking hey, about hold the, hold the, the fleeing of foreign one. capital. What about, what about the, 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 the massive hits to the Russian automotive industry? The massive hits to the Russian... Wait, let me finish! Let me finish! All you got... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What about the massive hits to the Russian aeroplane industry as 40% of their aeroplane fleet is grounded because they can't import the foreign parts? What about the massive impact on the long-range missiles that were heavily dependent You're on France, the German? Argument. I am expressing the, the argument. Yeah, you You're not faking. Shut the, the, the fuck up. You're actually is. just annoying right now. I'm trying to finish my point. Jesus That's Christ. Yes, you're gish galloping bullshit. Like, I don't understand. Why we're like, he, she told me uh, that the sanctions did not asshole. hurt the Russian economy, hurt what the American economy. It hurt the American economy more. So first, it achieved the... Said. Let me... F yeah, you're well, like, well, I want to address directly what she said. She's she's so I'm waiting for Dylan to finish. Can I can I finish or is this Fabian need to talk? Is Fabian is it the Fabian show? And Wake, I'm sorry. Did this get renamed the Fabian podcast? I was unfamiliar. Okay. So the automotive the industry was hit, point. the airplane industry was hit, tons of industry throughout Russia was hit. The fleeing of foreign capital, the loss of jobs, the loss of people, as many people fled, the, not only the draft, but fled because all the foreign companies left and a lot of young intellectuals, the young people who have maybe tech-minded backgrounds or working in tech industry, they left. The Russian economy is gonna feel the effects of these sanctions for not only years, for decades. A lot of the effects of the sanctions are still not felt yet as the GDP growth is inflated through the military industry being heavily subsidized by the state as they're spending up all their savings to try to keep the war economy going. This is gonna really hurt Russians down the line, not only today, it's hurting Russians today too. You ask Russians about their top issues, they talk about the rise in living, the rise in cost of living, the rise in grocery prices, the rise of inflation as the ruble for the first time, I think since like the 90s was worth like less than a penny the, these they're wh the whittling down of their savings not to mention the undercutting which was the main goal and should always be the main goal of the sanctions the undercutting of the war economy as they had to import foreign parts that they can't import anymore like microchips as they're trying to dodge sanctions we're trying to squeeze those in order to get long-range missiles to hit ukraine that was the main goal of the sanctions should always be the main goal of the sanctions now as for how it hurt the american economy now nice, right dude, now i don't think how it's hurting the american economy that significantly are you taking revenge against me personally for talking a lot on hippy dippy? Holy fuck. Okay, I'm yeah, done. We gotta, we gotta, okay, we so the it. one point that I wanted to add to this is the relative strength of the dollar compared to the euro and the yuan. The fucking relative strength to the euro stayed almost the same the entire time. You can say it's because Europeans were also f affected by the, con uh, the fucking conflict in Europe. But you look at the yuan or whatever, it fucking jumped up and then it collapsed back fucking down. It, China did not capitalize on the situation at all. So the fear that the Chinese were going to replace us was wildly fucking misplaced. So all this fucking simping for China and Russia, which is the way that I fucking read this kind of talk, is misplaced and misplaced informed simping so for russia going and all the way back okay. so going all the way back to the point that dylan gish galloped past because he really wanted to let everybody know that he had a lot of empirical evidence what in the, the fuck are they smart man i was asked about the russian economy i talked about the russian economy it's kind of the area I specialize in the, the, the okay. claim, we gotta, the let claim hey, we gotta let fabian get his point the out claim, Go ahead. the claim here is russian influence Again, we discuss the Mott and Bailey that is occurring here over and over and over again. And so then the we get into the Tucker. So then we get into the Tucker Carlson interview and the fact that this person who has some level of influence in the GOP gave a shitty softball interview. And we went on and on and on about how, how dare he not give a strong enough interview. And this is actually evidence of Russian influence, et cetera, because, because Putin picked a favorable person to interview that he knew that he could that he could convince a little bit and that he could kind of talk his talk. 
And then it came down to the grocery store situation where we were talking about it. And Lauren makes a very poignant point, very simple point, which is that, no, it wasn't the way that you were framing it. Instead, it was a sense of reporting and shock that we're being told that these sanctions are going to have these massive impact and how you guys are struggling with groceries. Russia's struggling too, but it's not collapsed like we thought. That's a fucking now, lie. Yes. You are That's fucking, not a fucking lie. You're basing it in a false is a premise. Fucking lie. Tucker Carlson ended the interview saying, you know, you're wrecking people's lives in our country, and that's what their leaders have done to us. He said that and seeing things, seeing what costs in our country and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. After comparing prices in America for groceries to Russia. So he's ending the interview trying to turn his viewers against American leadership. And you're lying on this fucking panel saying, well, his point was about the sanctions. Even and it's a retarded you point. Just That's the other point. Aaron said he was not trying to refer to the grocery in and of itself. He's talking about the sanctions in general, even though he ended the interview comparing grocery right. prices, you're, trying to turn taking... his audience against and politicians. Also, you're taking, you're taking, taking, what, you're taking, you're taking what Tucker you're said. Taking a, Fabian, acknowledge it's a retarded point because Dylan brought up 15 I different did, economic I did die on the and hill. besides eggs. Will, will you shut the fuck up? Listen to me. You talk Listen 90% me, of every program you're on, bitch. Yes, because I'm smarter than you and my points are actually no, good. No, you're oh not. God. You're just very you're verbose. Okay. You're okay. 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 So, okay. Regardless, Respond the Rashad argument and then, went, yeah, we'll move Rashad, on. Rashad, yes. I agree as I said before, that there's an element of propaganda. It's infotainment. That's what he does. He's not a fucking BBC journalist. Concede, he works for himself. Concede, shush, concede, shush, shush, concede. shush. Okay, you're going to play, shush, you're gonna play shut games. Shut the fuck All up. Badass. Sorry, I'm badass. not playing games. You, you interrupted to scream me that I was a liar. Go ahead. And then you, Go, you are a liar. Hey, wait, can, I ask Fabian, can I ask Lauren a question instead of Fabian just talking to Lauren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is housekeeping. This is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to go. I'm going to let Fabian respond. And then after he's responded, we're going to give it to Dylan it's to very ask simple. Lauren a question. Let the sweat ooze through the It's mind. very simple. Will you shut the fuck up, okay? I get that you're mad that I'm winning. You so literally do up, this all okay? the time and you're not winning. You're not I, winning. I'm, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You, it's you interrupt every five audience, seconds. I, listen, listen. I, yes, 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 yes. If I understand that you work for progressive victory, me. right? And I understand that the rest of you are leftists and like Lauren and Gibbs and I are against the other three progressives. I get it. Your audience yeah. likes your takes. Duh. Oh, progressive Anyways, victory. Just kidding. The, 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 <laughs> point of, the point of the argument here Those is that is right. that there is, a, there is a propagandistic element to our own media. And propaganda fights propaganda. Tucker Carlson is a form of propaganda. And our media is also a form of propaganda. And day in and day out, our media subjects us to things like, oh, uh, for some reason, inflation's actually not that bad. Or there'll be an article saying, uh, the rate of inflation is down, and yet cost of pr prices are still going up, which is like, Congratulations, you took Econ 101. We see propaganda on both sides. And there is an element of propaganda from Tucker. But the original point here was that you're being told that these sanctions, these things, while you're suffering at home from these increased prices due to this war that we're funding, you're being told that this is that you need to make this sacrifice. And what I'm saying is, is it's not having the same effects that you think it's having. You don't like these people still have a grocery oh, store. These, these people are still show. Oh, so because they're not okay, so I can lie on behalf of Russians, that misinformation, the stuff that they're basically completely changing the narrative on versus targeted sanctions and the 15 fucking industries that Dylan described that got turbo fucked by the war. Also, the tens of thousands of fucking Let's Russians fucking who are dying go. on the front Wait, line. You keep saying, oh my God, like what I'm saying is not entirely fucking accurate. The Tucker it's Carlson not, is a fucking you're so chill. You can't oh, yes, have, you any evidence. Evidence. have you brought up any yeah. evidence to counter what Dylan said? Yes. An argument. Hold on, hold on. Fabian, I'll repeat it back to you. Russians aren't suffering no. the way yes. that you think they're argument. suffering. Listen, the, the Russians no. aren't suffering. No, no, no. You just talk for 10 fucking minutes. Shut the fuck up. It'll be good practice for you. So, anyways, I, I know, know you're fucking I just wish you could hit make you enough during church. I wish that in church, your parents had hit you more so you'd shut the fuck up when other people were talking. So, anyways, the fucking point is you said. 
that Autology. Russians aren't hurting the way that you think that they're hurting. Well, I'm not retarded, so I paid attention to the news stories when they came out that specifically we were doing targeted sanctions that were going after the fucking billionaire class, not after the fucking civilians. Literally, that was part of the American-led propaganda was that we're not going to be fucking killing Russian civilians. We're not going to be fucking over Russian civilians. We're going after the oligarchs. We're going after the kleptocrats. We're going after the corrupt class. So Tucker coming out and saying... Wow, we didn't turbo rape the civilian population the way the United States government said that they wouldn't is fucking planting an idea and then acting shocked that it's not true. That's called propaganda. That's fucking retarded. And I, I, I literally retard call it propaganda. propaganda. You fucking so, retard. Yeah, why are you simping for it, you fucking douche? Oh, I'm not on. simping for it. Let's, I just okay. am the only one here that's actually fucking consistent what? with what I speak no, instead of just spouting fucking talking points. Because okay. you said okay. something okay. six fucking times have, without acknowledging what I said. You guys have which is the fact like you've reached the retard limit on there calling each other retarded. You've reached that rivals. limit. Okay. And I want to give it. Word. I want to give it to Dylan to ask his question. And once well, they go back uh, and forth, I want to give. Okay, okay. Ten seconds. So, Ten seconds. I want to respond to what Dylan said earlier. You have not in your frame. No, Fabian Liberty. Okay. Fabian Liberty, you have not acknowledged within your frame that there is a difference between allies and aligned interests interest versus rivals and domestic interest. You keep ignoring yes, that did. point. No, you didn't. No, I okay. didn't. I said now, that in this my, my allies. My you question, can't keep interrupting. Such as the Iraq War. Did you oh, think boy. that the military industrial complex? Wait, is this the lawlessness you allow in the panel space now? Do I need to come back? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting. Um, Lauren, my, my question, my questions for first, just to address a lot of things that have been said. The sanctions were never again, and I said this at the start, the sanctions were never meant to make Russia collapse. The sanctions were meant to one, in many ways, remove Russia's leverage over Europe. That was like the immediate, like uh, uh removing the Merkel age, the Merkel age or European energy dependence on Russia, which, by the way, used to be a bipartisan thing that we talked about. Trump talked about it. Other people talked about it. It was something we were supposed to support together. That was the first effect of the sanction. The second point of the sanctions was to undermine, like uh, Counter said, the Russian political class and, of course, the Russian war machine. Now, in these sanctions, with these being the goals, it has also had a downstream negative effect on everyday Russians, especially when it comes to the SWIFT sanctions very early on. That had a very immediate impact on Russians, and it still is having an impact on Russians. For example, I mean, in, in our space, if you're a Russian Twitch streamer, you can't get money on PayPal. That's not a thing you can do anymore because of the SWIFT sanctions, and that's like two years old. And since then, the sanctions would pile on to deal with loopholes, but with the ultimate goal of increasing the Europeans' leverage and Negotiations, knowing that they could remove the sanctions in a talk in the future and to undermine the Russian war economy. And in those goals, it has succeeded. I wish it would succeed more. I think in some areas it's failed when it comes to microchip uh, sanctions or specifically do the dodging of microchips. As for my question for Lauren, Lauren, do you acknowledge at the very least that the sanctions on Russia have been at least partially successful in these goals? Wow. Wow. What a question. Um, Especially because Biden, the one who uh, fucked up Nord oh Stream, the one who basically gave Russia control over Europe prices, job, the one, yeah, like to say that fucked up it, as in let goal, it get created or blew it up. The goal with the sanctions, according to blew you, it. is to remove oh, okay. leverage over Europe. They have done nothing but gain more leverage over Europe. How? Because of Biden. Because, so like. The whole Nord Stream situation. Uh -huh. um, it's blew, been blown up. destroyed Russia's Gone. leverage. How did that destroy Russia's, Russia's leverage? I was mean, Russia can't. Well, Russia can't export from... energy exports into Europe anymore. The Euro, right. they, they have the some of the energy infrastructure. Well, some of it's been blown up, but they don't do that. And now it's been replaced with American LNG, which has given us more leverage over the Europeans. Which, by the way, Republicans are angry that P Biden's even just putting a pause on LNG export, uh, LNG terminal expansion because we want to take advantage of this. Did we? Biden canceled a pipe pipeline that would have given us more leverage over the economy. And then what when is, Russia created a pipeline, he that blew happen? that up, hurting the environment, which you just How do you, wait, number one, how do you know he blew that up? Can I say that? How do you know he blew it up? It allegedly blew it up. 
Okay. Oh, come you on. Into you like, we don't know. Oh, we don't know. We, 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 we allegedly blew up. We don't know. I was too old to, to know what's going well, look, on. Look, Biden's senile. He couldn't have blown it up. He's too stupid to blow it up. True. do it. Stumbled into blowing it up. When Trump was for creating pipelines and creating more access to sharing oil, Merkel was the one against that. So you're saying that there was bipartisanship. There's actually a picture of Trump leaning back with Abe now just wait. I, bipartisan in the Trump United Trump States, Trump. not bipartisan in the not bipartisan doesn't, doesn't mean the entire world. Very bipartisan very means in America. <laughs> I was there was bipartisanship in America that we didn't like how much the Europeans were dependent on Russian energy. It wasn't just Trump. It's just that Trump was willing to be a lot more loud and bang his chest over. That's the difference. He was the only one fighting to actually get control. And did he achieve it? Did he, did he do it? Up. Did he figure? it out or did he fail and then the russians had the Merkel. leverage at the start of the war Merkel wouldn't yeah. allow it to happen so i don't so i don't i'm not i wouldn't vote for merkel i'm not german people. i don't i'm not voting for merkel in the next election i i don't like merkel very much i would have voted for schultz actually yeah she loves green the part is, green the, the point of the matter is that joe biden has handled this perfectly in terms of building leverage over the russians i mean even the way we handled the war with supplying the re ukrainians weapons we have well, wait, can, wait, she never answered my question can you can you answer my question that it at least does did some good that the sanctions at least did they achieved their goal they, they achieved, achieved partially their goal of undermining the russian war economy so you, will you admit that they didn't fully achieve their goal no because i think that certain ships are still why getting through you, uh, why do you keep uh putting partially in front of it in because there's of things i want because i don't think the government's aggressive enough they're turbo fucked i want to hear admiral gibbs really quick go ahead uh, yeah, do you so, want to hear admiral gibbs? hold yeah, on yeah, wait 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 lauren <laughs> Listen, I love tagging. you, but I get to say who I want to hear from. What I want I to hear from. I wanted to I get continue it. with my Admiral Gibbs. I get it. Really We're going to get to Admiral Gibbs, I promise, but we got to go to Rashad first, and then we'll go to Admiral Gibbs. Okay? Cool. I mean, the shifting yeah. of the points are, well, they didn't do complete damage to the Russian economy, so the media's lying. The point of the matter is to do damage to our adversary. Like, what do Republicans want more damage to Russia? Or not, because I don't think that's the narrative. I don't think Republicans actually wanted to take an adversarial stance to Russia as it stands right now. You think Tucker Carlson wants to get more aggressive? I don't think so. He spent the beginning of the interview trying to get Putin to be more anti-NATO than Putin even was in the interview. The idea that somehow or another, Tucker Carlson was just trying to bring attention to the fact that the media is lying. Does Tucker Carlson want more aggression, economic aggression against Russia or less? What's the ultimate goal here with that video? Because I already just proved that Tucker came to the end of the video, compared the prices of American groceries to Russian groceries and said, you know, the prices are so much higher in the States. You know, this is radicalizing me against our leaders that they're subjecting us to this lifestyle. He ended the entire video trying to manipulate the facts and turn the American people against our leaders with a bullshit video about groceries so for you it to was, sit here and make it seem or do you no, i was just gonna say it was it, it was post ironic shit posting that that's what i learned tonight so that there, it's like the the dumb like average intelligence smart meme where it's like the bell curve or whatever it's like the dumb meme is like it was just a shit post the average meme was like no he was serious and then the genius people are like no it's just a shit post that's what i took away from tonight. okay <laughs> finish your point rashad then we're gonna get ibs no, I mean, that was Tucker's entire point when he got, when uh, Fox News caught that lawsuit was how can anybody take me seriously? But, um, you know, it's just play, both you and Fabian uh, are playing this game of shifting the minor goalposts. Of the legal facts, by the way, that is such a manipulation of the legal facts. He's saying when he's being sarcastic, when he's being obviously, like he sometimes says things in a very sarcastic tone, that's typical mm. Tucker. And Regarding an election being mm, stolen, right? It's, there are things that he's, and so that lawsuit, it's like, how could anyone believe that this sarcastic tone is literal? And then you mm. twist that to be, how can anyone mm. believe anything Wait, he so says? Was by the, the way, grocery yeah. interview, by the way, was what? The, what, I'm <laughs> radicalized against the American government. Was that sarcastic? That was sarcasm. I think that he, no, I don't think that was sarcasm, but then again, oh. how is that a lie? That's that's how he feels. That's See, I can't, that's yeah, I can't, I mean, oh, yeah, but so how could we tell? Opinion. How could we ever tell? Okay, Gibbs, right, go ahead. Okay, are you right. not able to tell Hold the on. difference between a fact and an opinion? Thank God you guys aren't lawyers, because like I, I don't think you have a firm concept. I of mean, it, it seems to me like Tucker's trying to push an opinion, opinion. is fact. Okay. 
So I just want I just wanted to quickly say that I'm looking at graph comparisons of what like the average Americans spend on food and like cumulative food prices and also one on share of expenditure spent on food versus total consumer expenditure and all of on all of these graphs that I'm checking over the last 2 years the United States when it comes to stability on this has been miles and miles and miles ahead of the Russians in comparison. In fact, if you check cumulative food price data and inflation around cumulative food prices, it's just been like almost like a straight up like line. It looks like like it looks it looks more uh, the the sl the slope on that is more inclined than the ramp trump almost fell over it's a it's pretty deep so i can send you that data if you want it but i just yeah, want to offer yeah, please it. Okay. do because everything that i'm reading when i type in yes, russian economy and sanctions uh like cnn says russian boasts it's beating sanctions but it's well we have russia boasts, boasts it's beating boasts sanctions what a surprise not. yeah, uh, yeah they're not admitting to it but then financial times the surprising resilience of the russian economy I'm business insider more. how russian economy has avoided going bust after two years of war i mean it's just so crazy they supposed to well, yeah, again the, my argument was that my, i said at the start and that was right opened with it my argument was never that we must collapse the russian economy or the sanctions meant to collapse the russian economy america very much doesn't want to destroy russia for some of the reasons i've previously stated um it there's it, there's no interest in that the interest has always been to increase leverage have it get worse and worse and worse over time to pressure the russians to pull out of ukraine and or to undermine the russian war economy Hold on. Okay. Quick question. The sanctions were before there was actual, like actual boots on the ground, correct? So the whole point of the sanctions was to prevent boots on the ground. Did that succeed? I, that's that was not the point of the policy. sanctions. What the fuck? Yes, it was. Also, wait, the point of this, wait, the point of this, wait, no, no, what? Are meant to stop I'm sorry. War in no, their entirety. The, the point of this, the thing that you the, want to say right now. When the sanctions were, what? no, 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 okay. Warren. You think that sanctions are supposed to stop wars in their entirety. I want you to say that shit with your whole fucking chest. It was meant to to make it so that they were incapable of getting resources to the... Yeah, it's an, it was meant Let me to jump on okay, that. So I'm, denying I'm, denying avocados. I'm denying avocados to Miami to Hold make on, let me tag stop it. being an asshole. I'll that, tag it. You keep being I'm, an asshole. Right, Did I wait, fail? I'm, Okay, go, go ahead, Gibbs. Help, 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 your, help your girl I mean, out. Right. Go ahead. All right, so I want to say, all right, so first... Let's just grant, I, I don't have the numbers that, yet. I haven't looked at the, this info if they posted it, but uh, let's just grant everything that Dylan said uh, was 100% true. I'm just going to grant it about the Russian economy under the sanctions. What's interesting to me about this interview is the message that the Dems took and the, the message I as a Republican took from this, right? So the Dems are sitting here saying, look at Tucker go, oh, what well, was me? What was America? Look how bad it is. The mm -hmm. message I took is, look at this terrible country. Russia is under these sanctions. All their stuff's suffering. Their people spend a disproportionate amount and all their prices are rising. But hey, look, Look, their prices are less than or comparable to the, what you're paying here in America for the same goods. It's not How comparable. is that even an issue? Not true. And so not comparable. that is definitely a message that I'm getting. And that's definitely a lot of Republicans. Yeah, are that's getting. a bad message. That's incorrect. So that's misinformation. That's propaganda. I got some well, for you. I got some for you. They literally right. listed the prices on Gibbs, the thing. If your income Gibbs. sucks, if your income is $5, and you're, if let's say, let's do really simple math. Your income okay. in Russia is five dollars a month. I understand your income, what you're saying. Your income in America is a hundred dollars a month. Sure. Avocados cost two dollars and fifty cents. You're right. Tucker Carlson goes to Russia and he's like, "Oh my God, mm -hmm. avocados cost two dollars and fifty cents here as well." Doesn't that make Tucker Carlson a fucking idiot? No, that makes the person thinking that, oh, hey, the person thinking, hey, the avocados being 250 in a war-torn country with sanctions uh, put on them, and then the free and independent leader of the Shouldn't world Tucker give that context. For avocado, that's pretty pathetic on our part. What are we doing wrong is the message you should be taking, and it's letting the Democratic leadership dig us into an economic but, Shouldn't, well, shouldn't, wait, 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 so shouldn't Tucker it, tell the audience how much on average a Russian spends? Because if I went to you and I said, wait, no, 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 wait, let's stop. If I went to you, if I, wait, no, if Admiral Gibbs, Admiral Gibbs, that's if I told you in thing. Nambia they spend $50, uh, 50 cents on Coca-Cola, 
would you have any frame of reference to know if that's a lot of money, a little bit of money? Like, you have no reference because you've never been to fucking Namibia. When you make five dollars a month, that's a lot of fucking money. I don't understand how you don't understand relative if I go, properties if of value. I go to Mexico and I buy a case of beer for two dollars and fifty cents, right? And that's two dollars oh. fifty cents American, right? Okay, like you do it like Cozumel or whatever. And then I come back and I come back to America and go, wow, my case of beer is twenty four dollars. And you want to sit here and argue, oh, well, they spend a higher percentage on their of their income. When I'm, I'm going, hey. Bottom line is it's the same product and it costs different prices. Uh, that's really the bottom line. But what about the difference in value of the company? I'll be there. I don't think about, I don't I don't think about it that way before. I don't give a shit what their percentage of their income is. You can't take it. What about the difference in value? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's an insane sentence. Rashad, try this. What about the difference? What about the difference in currency value? We're not even taking that into account when we talk about going to another country to buy the same product. Furthermore, Russians spend, according to the data, the Moscow Times, in February, they spent 50.1% of their monthly earnings on food products. They're struggling. You know how much American pay? Americans pay? They pay 11%. So like, when we start talking about, oh, you know, Russians are doing just fine. I, mean, I don't, I don't know about fine. I don't know if that fifty percent number is real. I don't give a shit. They're spending, a, they're spending about they're spending like, uh, either uh, half or a little bit under half of their monthly income on groceries. They're not doing mm -hmm. well. It's they're yeah. struggling. They're not doing well at all. These these sanctions are having a significant impact on their day to day life. They're not out here just living the same life that we are, spending the same amount that we are in relativity to their income that we are. No, they're taking L's left and right. And you're 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 copping please and running defense and you're making shit up. All trio. No, I'm absolutely not making shit up. I'm saying oh that we don't I don't God. think what you're making average, shit up. I think what, you're not understanding comparative oh, value or you're ignoring it. I don't I'm think he's making just, something up either. I just think the value it. doesn't matter because the comparative value doesn't matter. What I'm saying is the average yeah. American looks at the item. Well, there's a reason why people are going to Mexico and other comparative countries. Comparative value Mexico, doesn't right? matter. Right? Right? If it's, I'm a Mexican, Admiral Gibbs, I need you to listen to me real quick because otherwise you you're going to give me a fucking heart attack on this fucking program. Okay. So what we're talking about is the policy of nation states. Oh. So the United States of America has fucked us in the ass in a variety of ways. I will concede that fact. Sometimes I feel like I have a pineapple Hot. shoved up my ass on a fucking daily basis, right? However, what Americans are trying to say is that Russians, by comparison, have a, a spiked watermelon shoved up their ass. And so Not what hot. we're saying is that they don't have larger assholes, okay? So when you bring up Mexicans, <laughs> the, that the 12 case of beer is $2.50 in, uh, $2 in fucking Mexico, and let's, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's $2.50 in the United States of America, okay? An American can take advantage of the comparative value because they can go to the United States or Mexico and they can spend way less money on a fucking product. But right. a fucking Mexican is a Mexicant, okay? He only makes $2.50 a fucking month. So his choices are, his choices are to buy a 12 pack of beer or to fucking starve. Those are his options. So when somebody says, hey guys, did you know that beer in Mexico is $2.50? It's so insanely cheap there. That guy's a fucking retard because the Mexican can't take advantage of the cheap beer. And the foreign person, unless you're willing to fly to Mexico every other fucking weekend to buy cheap beer, they can't take advantage of it. Okay. That is the thrust of the I'm point. Gonna... I'm gonna lead. I'm gonna read some uh, super chats. We are A watermelon kinda... spiked thrust. Yeah. Um, well, let me read some okay, super I chats. I don't think the average Mexican is as poor as you're making them out to be. It's oh, what is that? The, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna the read point. the super chats. We're not gonna get distracted from these money from my money. Okay. Five dollars. Five dollars. Not making money. Please. Coast Five dollars from Artemis Fowl. How many people were held accountable for the lives of Afghanistan who was punished are the same people in charge? Ten more dollars from Artemis Fowl. Uh, I laughed at Tucker for the grocery store thing. Russian food is cheaper because he paid in rubles, which trades 100 to 1 for USD, and Russians get paid far less than Americans. $5 from Cameraman502. He gets it. Where did Tucker mention sanctions in that grocery bit? And $10 from Zephyr Hash. Does Admiral Gibbs have to be introduced to the McDonald's index? Yes, some goods cost different in different countries because the entire supply chain costs differently. Yeah, can I just, as from personal experience, I've, you know, I lived for eight months in Ukraine and I live in four months in the United States. 
when I live in Ukraine, despite work costs, because I have to like pay for fixers, translators, and you know that type of expensive, my living costs there are tremendously cheaper than what they would be in the United States living in the DC area, which is the area I was born and raised. I was born in the DMV. And so, you know, I might go over there and the products might be cheaper, especially labor costs over in Ukraine are much cheaper. If I pay a translator over there, it's going to cost a lot less if I pay a, an American translator. But that doesn't like if I was to go over there and I was to say, hey, look at all these cheap prices, the answer wouldn't be, oh, the Ukrainians all have it economically fine. And because look how cheap all the grilled cheeses are. Oh, my God, it's a really nice in the Ukrainian economy. We don't need to send any aid. It doesn't. No, it would. You would have to look at how much Ukrainians are making. I mean, I know teachers in Ukraine that make it like one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars a month. So that cheap grilled cheese to me is a lot different to them. So that that's comparative value. And he didn't have his headphones on. I, I heard you. OK, I, you did hear me. Good. I understand what it's comparative a value. It's a post I wrote a post. I do want to give it to Fabian. God help us all. Yeah. Um, Fabian, go ahead. So. So, again, the topic for tonight right, is about Russian influence. Again, I have to reiterate that there is this Mott and Bailey about what influence means, because obviously all countries that are, have a large uh, amount of power and state apparatus and intelligence agency have some level of influence. So the real argument is about how much influence they have. And what you've seen is us be bogged down in attempting to determine what level of disingenuous propaganda and or stupidity comes from one specific interview of a one person that has some sway with conservatives who the entire internet and Twitter memed on, who immediately got community noted when he was on X, and who almost every conservative is aware that the grocery store thing was dumb propaganda. And we're supposed to be bogged down. It was defended here. Discussing this. No, it was not defended here. Again, no, you, you, you lack the ability lies. to oh my God. understand Stop the many bad no, Don't believe minutes. thy lying eyes. I, I, I understand that you have difficulty following anything that isn't just specific no, this hard whole facts. Whole conversation was caused because true. you I'm were very, I'm, very, I'm very slow, yes. No, you. Rashad, relax. Relax, buddy. It's okay. If you I'm wind it back, you'll relax. understand. It, it, what are you is, talking about? And I said it, it is, multiple it okay. times before you that. ever got mad at me that he was a propagandist. And then I even, before you ever got mad at me, I said, Marjorie Taylor Greene, probably retarded. And then I said, um, somebody else, probably retarded. And then Based. I said, Tucker Carlson is almost certainly selling entertainment and is selling a specific narrative. The question is how much influence. Right. The question is how much influence does this evil Russian menace have on the on the political positions and 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 our policy? I want to answer that question, and I don't want to listen to four more minutes of ranting. I want to answer that question directly. That perspective. I have to reframe it. I don't want to hear your reframing. I don't give a shit. You talk for five minutes at a time. Okay. So the answer to your question is that this is. The ant, no, I refuse. The ant, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna go find a fucking pineapple and shove it up my own ass right now. So, anyways, the fucking your answer to your fine. question, or is that just me? The, I'm no, wait, what? Sorry. It's just you. That, that's These cameras like super laggy. Is it just me? It's just you. Oh, is he oh. gamer? Fuck. Oh, I, oh, no, I you're fine else. on my end. Um, okay, anyways, 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 anyways. Oh, fair enough. So, sorry, I was just like super laggy. Just you, my bad. Back to the pineapple. Regardless, yeah. regardless of the pineapples up my ass. The, the truth of the matter is that Tucker Carlson's perspective and Trump's perspective on Russia, NATO, the conflict in Ukraine are popular with 55% of the Republican Party, and that part of the party is probably going to dominate in the presidential election. So saying, like, you can, I'll, I'll concede a part of the argument. We don't know how much of this is organic conservative perspective mixed with Russian information warfare. I don't know how much of which is which, right? I'm saying it's right. bad. I'm saying it's bad, and it should be actively fought. Okay, I'm, well, saying, it, I'm saying it that, is obviously yeah. right. I'm saying that it's mostly. Like it I'm saying it's mostly disgruntled Republicans, and that the idea that it's any really significant influence Russian propaganda is cope. That's what that is. That's that's really the bottom line. I, I don't think it's cope at all. But, 
I mean, okay. yeah, we have, have federal doc we have federal documents literally most noting and taking document of Russian propaganda on social media swaying the people. I mean, when like the most well, we have, like, we have some of the most so, yeah, popular voices like in conservative media podcasts. repeating that's Russian state that's talking points, I think that's significant. That's Gibbs, it's not a lie. My, my frustration. Who believed in the Russian propaganda was already conservative and was not swayed. That's like my... and I actually and I actually gave Wick a link that showed all of the data showing what populations were already like were convinced by any I'll Russian. Put the link in YouTube and, and how Twitch much for you. Propaganda yeah. there actually was so Gibbs. false, and then. False. Yeah, and then also false. like the everything the Russian propaganda was just a way for Hillary to do like a false um to go after Trump for Gibbs? bullshit reasons. Gibbs, you do you believe the real? internet research agency was real? Uh god damn it. I'm talking to Gibbs. So I'm talking Gibbs. to Lauren. <laughs> no, I'm talking to Gibbs. You wait. <laughs> okay. Stop. Okay. Hold, Hold on. Both of you, both of you shut up. All of you shut up. Okay. We are coming. We only got like which is a yes or no here. question. That's all. Both these questions. Laura was speaking first. We're gonna go to Dylan, and Laura, and then we're gonna go to and we're gonna go counter and Gibbs next. That's, That's racist we're against do. Mexicans. I was done. Oh well, no! Well, I told Dylan. I told Laura yeah. like, do do you believe the Internet Research Agency was real, and that do they were believe? operating during the 2016 election? I think she's just um, saying the min the impact is minimal. I'm yeah. Okay, so you do acknowledge though that the Russians were engaging in information warfare and attempting to. I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of countries that um, use Twitter and social media to try to push their agenda, just like the can, way Americans do. And but this isn't. Can you answer my yes or no question? Not like stealing votes or anything like that. Even if this yeah. were in play, which I, according to the data that I sent, I said that it was real. However, the impact that you guys are claiming it has is absolutely not shown in the data. I, and I actually sent all of the data to WIC to you show you okay. the people who believe this Russian propaganda were already deeply right and were going to vote for Trump. And so it wasn't like, it wasn't like a bunch so, of Democrats read these. Oh, so okay, okay, so like, the 2016 oh election. Biden did, oh my God. God, Hillary did this. So, oh my God, I'm going to vote for Trump. That I, didn't happen. I do believe that the Russians did try to have an impact. How much impact they had in 2016 is debatable at best. But no, it's not. Let it's me, not let me, let me. Best. Okay, it's even if I was to, of. even if I was to concede that, the idea that if you acknowledge that they those there were people who were believing in russian propaganda then what happens when you put those people and you put them in the legislature and then any one of those people could call for a recall vote on the speaker of the house then that can have a legislative impact can't it if enough of the people were swayed but once again the yeah like the people who think that babies are being harvested for the ukrainian government do you think that person might slightly be swayed against ukraine that's russian state propaganda by the way it, it came from russian state Admiral Gibbs. You're talking about specific, if you think MTG gets to control the entire country. I do think she can call a recall vote, and she said publicly that she would do it. And I think that has an impact when people are saying, I will try to end your political career if you even think about voting on Ukraine aid. Whether or not it eventually stops it for good, if it just delays it 50 days, 60 days, that has an effect in a war. True. Admiral Gibbs. You, you said something that I feel was very true. That was very painful to me. But here, here's the here's the thing about it. I think conservatives have legitimate concerns, some of which I deeply sympathize with. For instance, being propagandized by the American government, being forced to fight forever wars on other fucking assholes, being interventionist to our own detriment, not being able to secure our own border. I am perfectly fine with all of that. And as a matter of fact, we probably agree on 95% of policy in reference to those issues. However... I think what's happening is our rivals and our enemies are using these issues in order to propagate propagandize conservatives in order to turn over the tables of the Republic and to not play the game anymore as far as living in a country with assholes. And I get it. Progressives are degenerate. Liberals are fucking weird, fucking even centrists such as myself. We don't agree on everything with fucking conservatives. But the truth is, we all do share the same country. We all do share the same destiny. And we all do share a geopolitical interest. So what I'm not interested in is Trumpian conservatives withdrawing from Ukraine, buddy fucking Ukraine to the cost of hundreds of thousands of lives, and then collapsing our European alliance. I think that would be horrific geopolitically and potentially kill hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. I don't want to do that just for a conservative post-ironic grocery store shit post. That does not sound worth it to me.
I, I don't think those are, are like fair, like, what, which one are we choosing? Equivalencies, equate, whatever. I don't think they're equal. I don't think they're equal comparisons, right? Can we get I, answers? Uh, I, I just, I, I just want to say on that one, yeah, and then I'll be done. I just don't think it's fair. Like, I, as a conservative, right, I'm not a huge Trumper, right? That's not would have been, not been my first choice. But I do think it's fair for him to be able to ask some of these questions and it not be Russian propaganda. Be like, I think it's fair to go, hey, why are we not like dick on? Yeah, like why? Why are we like? Why are we not gonna fix the border before we send money to Ukraine? Why are we paying more into NATO than any other country, and them not paying like when fair wage? When he stood up like, in these front are of questions. European leaders, when he stood up in front of European leaders, and he stuck his finger in their faces, and he said, "Y'all need to pay your fucking fair share, or else we're gonna fuck you up." Like that was actually one hilarious, two awesome. Europeans do need to take their own security seriously. I want a leader who will pressure Europeans to take European security seriously. What I don't want is a president who's willing to pull out of the alliance entirely, which well, he has mentioned multiple times. I mean, well, if they're still not well, going to get, like, if you can just keep throwing money in a money in a hole, like, well, I let's mean, be, like, wait, let's be clear. Let's, no, let's stop. Let's like, stop calling it a hole. Uh, collective security isn't a hole. It's the interest of all of us. Number one, but number two, of those nation states, before Russian, before yeah. the Russian invasion of Ukraine, eight out of the thirty-one NATO states paid now the number is 18 it's going to be over 20 by the end of the year paying the 20 percent uh the two percent threshold yeah, that is a significant improvement but so what i don't want to hear is from people like we're seeing them do what we've been asking them to do for forever we're seeing the europeans surpass us in supporting ukraine when it comes to financial aid already sent and dedicated packages they've promised for the future and we're still saying oh they need to pay more into it i do think they need to pour more into it but they've already outpaced us and they're already and they're meeting our demands so why would now that? be the time to threaten say things like hey russia you can go fuck them up you can go fuck them up if they don't pay the two percent which creates uncertainty about a defense commitments it can create a crisis I mean, okay. I like. Okay. I, I, I understand respond, that. but then, uh, but then yeah. we gotta, we, we gotta we wrap. Up. I, I understand. Yeah, I understand things. all those. Yeah, I understand all those. Yeah, concerns. yeah, we're gonna get closing. I, yeah, okay. I just, I just okay. think that they're they're fair questions to ask, and I think there's like sometimes you need a lot of fire under somebody's ass. I mean, Paul, I could argue that maybe the reason why these countries are paying is because Trump has lit a fire under their ass, kind of thing. I mean, I think that's a fair assessment. Maybe it's a fair question, you know. Like, but. I don't know. I don't think it's fair to say this is Russian influence just because it's not. It's some, it might benefit Russia in some way and hurt the Democratic Party in another or something. That's I, not I do. Answer. I do okay. just want to say quickly one last thing before we go into the next thing. Af there was there's a lot of talk of like us coming to Europe's defense. There's only one time Article 5 has been called, and that was after 9-11, and the Europeans went with us into Kandahar. They went with us into Iraq, many of them into Iraq as well, gallivanting across the Middle East, and their young Ben died for war started on our soil. And then the side effects of the wars, when it comes to mass migration from the violence that was in the region, that did also affect Europe as well. They put themselves on the line for our security interests, and if we want them to put their interest on the line again in the future when it comes to other issues be it taiwan or other things then we should take their security interests into our uh, into our consideration at the very least and not abandon them okay thank you everyone for a robust discussion today uh it was you guys like to talk and like to yell at each other uh that is both great and terrible i love it and i hate it at the same time thank you all for being here i want to give you all a chance to have Closing statements. Tell people where they can find you. Let's go to closing statements. We're going to start with Fabian. We're going to work our way around, and we're going to give Rashad the last word. Go ahead, Fabian. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me start with me. Um, so I think my – I remain unconvinced. I think my position is still the same, which is that there is obviously some level of influence from many different places on our political system, and that – the Russian influence is one that is consistently and constantly overblown by the Democrats over and over and over again, and has been for the last decade. Um, it is kind of a tool that never really works, but they use it over and over again, hoping that it will work. Um, propaganda has always existed, and there are some forms of propaganda and information warfare as, as, as far back as war itself has existed. Um, and so it is something that we always have to be vigilant towards in terms of some levels of misinformation. Best way to deal with that is not freak out, not have hysterics, but instead utilize systems like community notes or, you know, collective systems or, um, you know, whatever it is that Facebook or Meta wants to do if they want to figure out better systems that don't um, cause issues uh, towards free speech. Um, the 
increase in the presumption of ideas uh, being influenced is, is, is a problem specifically because it allows people to paint genuine opposition as Russian misinformation. That is the real threat that we're under with this, with this idea going rampant is that if we allow this his, histrionics to go above and beyond reality, what it allows the Democrats or the left to do is say, oh, you don't want to fund Israel? You don't want to fund Ukraine? You don't want to be involved in this specific military operation? Oh, well, that must be because you're bought by the Russians. Because the, and, and, and we're seeing it here. We are seeing argument after argument after argument that the two are synonymous with each other when they're clearly not. And the power given to the state to potentially stop this is a threat we should be concerned about. And we can see this even with something as simple as the filibuster in the Senate, right? The filibuster has been around since 1789, and in 1975, it went from 66 votes to 60 votes. In the 2010s, it went from 60 votes on legislation, but a simple majority vote on things like nominations. And if we keep using this rhetoric that, oh, 20% is hijacking the entire political system, so how dare they be allowed to filibuster, et cetera? How dare they be allowed to have these process? Damn, is she still going? Oh, damn, I didn't, know. I didn't see that. I just went off to get some tea. Okay, let's keep going. The United States is built up to have a slow legislative process are going to be eroded and destroyed so that we have a more progressive and leftist form of government that gets bigger and bigger down this snowball hill that we're already heading. So don't believe the hysteria. It's bullshit. And yes, propaganda exists. When you see it, fight it and call it out for the stupidity that it is. Okay, thank you for being here. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, Fabian Liberty on YouTube or on uh, Twitter. Or technically on Twitch, but I don't stream to Twitch. Uh, give them a follow, gang. Uh, thank you for being here. I do appreciate you. <laughs> Next up, counterpoints. Go ahead. So, what I would say kind of responding and doing an outro. The Russian anti-Russian propaganda has been overused and exaggerated, Fabian says. I kind of agree. I think Russia has been a rival forever. We should have expected them to be a ge geopolitical rival. We shouldn't be shocked that there are rivals. As a matter of fact, I would like it very much in the future if we work towards a more friendly relationship with Russia. But just because we've been talking shit about them and just because we've been treating them as an adversary doesn't mean that they haven't been acting as an adversary. Propaganda always exists. Yeah, no shit. But there's propaganda for aligned interests like the United States of America, Europe, their allies, and all the people that have built up this $65 trillion commercial empire that we're all reliant on for cheap gas and Funko Pops and avocados. This might seem materialistic and stupid, but it's not. The reason why we are wealthy enough to have this conversation is because of the American empire. And it's worth, depend it's worth defending and it's worth explaining. One of the things that I got frustrated with with Fabian throughout this conversation was that he's mentioning how information warfare and propaganda is being used actively by all sides all the time. But I felt like he underemphasized the fact that there is a difference between allies and friends and domestic governments using propaganda towards shared goals versus adversaries using propaganda to undermine your goals. Obviously, different factions fight for different goals. So pretending that it's all information warfare is kind of fucking retarded. It's counterproductive. There are things that we should all work towards. I appreciate contrarian thought. I have no problems with contrarian thought. As a matter of fact, I think contrarian thought is one of the most important parts of the American fucking Republic. So contrarian thought is important because it keeps you on your toes, but it shouldn't be used to justify stupid fucking positions. You mentioned how the 20% of the country is being called out for hijacking the, you know, the Republican system or whatever. That's good. I'm happy we have a slow moving political system that actually factors in all the variables. However, I think another factor of that Republican system is being willing and able to call those people fucking retarded. So if 20% of people are hijacking your system and they're doing things that are counterproductive for hundreds of thousands or millions of people and potentially kills people that you care about, you are allowed to call that morally objectionable and stupid in public aggressively. And that's part of the beauty okay. of our system. Where can people find you, Counterpoints? Counterpoints 40K. So type that into YouTube. You'll find my main channel. It's mostly science fiction breakdowns of popular media. It's doing very well. I'm very happy about it. If you want to check out the political channels, they're linked down in the description. Also, Counter Connor, C-O-U-N-T-E-R-C-O-N-O-R -O 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 on Twitter. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you. Uh, next up, Lauren De Laguna, please. 
Uh, hi, you can find me on X, on YouTube, on Instagram, and that's about it. And my name is Lauren De Laguna. That's D E L A G U N A. And um, I just want to say I really appreciate uh, everyone for not using uh, the retarded word too much because it really offended me and would make me cry. And um, also, the whole Russian hoax is bullshit spun up by Hillary to basically target Trump for four years, beyond four years, and put uh, make him go through ridiculous indictments, which were unfounded. And um, yeah, I think we're just not operating with the same set of facts, like when we're trying to argue. So it's very funny because like certain things that I think are bullshit, you guys think are legit. Other things that I think are legit, you guys think are bullshit. So um, it's very difficult. It reminds me of uh, why I don't really argue Israel-Palestine because it's like, and it also goes to explain why there's only been 27 bills passed because we just can't seem to agree on underlying facts. But um, I sent I sent uh, Wick all of the links with all of the facts that I was using and basing it off of, including like the Russian economy growth in 2023 and the egg prices increasing around the world, not just Russia. So it's just so funny that that was your only example and um, among other things. So. Uh, Make sure to stick to the facts because facts don't care about your feelings. And Lauren De Laguna, for president. Thank you for really being here. I really appreciate you coming. Next up, Dylan Burns, please. Man, I, right. I did a like a two minute speech just about eggs. I talked about the brown eggs. I talked about the white eggs. I even talked about the polka dot Easter eggs. That's all I talked about. I didn't talk about aeroplanes. I didn't talk about the automobile industry. I didn't talk about anything else. Just those. Lovely, lovely eggs. But by the way, if you look at egg inflation, it was worse in Russia, too, um, because of the sanctions, because they couldn't import European agricultural products. And when it comes to energy exports, we got to remember Russia is the number one, the number one uh, economic uh, industry is going to be uh, energy exports and their energy export infrastructure they built up in Europe. Once that shuts down, they can't just magically construct that in Asia. They tried to replace it with Indian and Chinese exports, but the Indians and Chinese, despite whether or not the price caps were there, knew they could get that energy export at a lower price because Russia was in a bad negotiating position. And they only picked up like, what was it? I think it was like one fifth or one eighth. I forget the exact statistic of what the Europeans used to consume. And the Europeans are now consuming Norwegian crude and American LNG exports. Exports. So if your main economic export is going to be, you know, the natural gas or going to be crude is going to be these types of products, losing one of your main consumer bases is going to hurt you whether you like it or not. And we needed that European independence to end if they're going to engage in this way uh, in Ukraine. Um, now, go, moving on to, uh, I, I mean, I, we had talked about Russian infiltration, the whole thing. I just wanted to quickly say. In the news, I don't know if people were watching, Transnistra, which was the breakaway part of Moldova that the Russians interfered in the 90s to prop up when the Moldovan government tried to assert, assert authority because the Russians said they had to save the Russian speakers of Transnistra for anybody, if that rings a bell for anybody in that room. They just had the first Congress, Transnistrian Congress, which is just a meeting of the local thug authority that is ruling over Transnistra that's deeply embedded with organized crime. It was the first meeting they've had in 15 years and they asked for the russians to come save them to come save them what does that sound like and i'm not saying this to say that's going to happen anytime soon but i am saying this to show that if anybody is under the opinion that once the russians you know get something out of ukraine they're going to stop with ukraine they have no ambitions anywhere else if that's something you believe while moldova is deeply embedded with romania a nato ally and that could provoke a confrontation with nato if people think that it's not a wise investment i would ask them to think of the future and make sure to be prepared for all externalities anyway uh, you can find me at Dylan Burns TV on YouTube. I'm a war journalist. I'm going back to Ukraine in a month. Hope you follow my uh, my travels. Uh, give him a follow, gang. He's great, right? Uh, I know I had uh, concerns before he went to Ukraine, but he's put them to bed. Um, he's done a great job, and I think you all should give him a follow. Thank you for being here. Really Thank appreciate you, you jumping in last minute. Appreciate you. Um, next up, Admiral Gibbs. Hey, hey. Uh, so let's see. Uh, basically, 
don't take i just want my my leftist friends and com um, compatriots here in this great nation to, to understand something not every opinion that us conservatives and republicans uh, in general are coming to is the fault of propaganda we're not as dumb as y'all think i know that that's a meme we're not as backwards we are sitting here we're looking at issues and some of the issues y'all care about aren't the issues that we care about and vice versa we all know this but whenever we do have controversy don't turn right at us and tell us hey it's propaganda you're dumb for believing the propaganda we have our own opinions we have our own sources and that's not conducive to this uh, conversation of getting stuff done as for russian propaganda i think it's a, a very small minor factor here and uh i think i've been very clear on that point overall as for where you can find me i'm admiral gibbs you can find me as admiral gibbs on everything thanks for having me Wick. no Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. And uh, gang, give them a follow. Great. Uh, you still streaming after this? We're going to write into you. I will in be. Adam, okay. Thank you. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, and you can blame him if you hated this topic, uh, Rashad Crenshaw. Please, go ahead. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Thank everybody for the great debate. Um, I just think that the MAGA wing of the Republican Party is uh, embracing a me uh, an information war cycle that can cost them foreign policy, I guess, reputation for decades. I think they're going down a path that's completely unfounded in reality. And I think that this um, debate has explored that clearly. And I think that the beginning of the clear and intense Russian misinformation campaign, as we know it clearly in front of us, so we can clearly see is beginning with Tucker Carlson. It's being spurred on by people like Candace Owens and Russell Brand and others. And I think that uh, people should pay more attention because it's gonna get worse as time goes on. So that's all I got to say. Where can people find you? Uh, Rashad Crenshaw on YouTube. Bye! Peace. <laughs>